Good morning, Raptor Freaks. Lexi Ott's here. It's 9.30, and it is uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. And we are doing a WOW Wednesday, Wild Card Wednesday. The WOW of it is Jordy Fernandez, Sacramento Kings assistant coach. Their team won their play-in game last night over the Warriors, and will be playing against the Pelicans on Friday for the right to play SGA in the Oklahoma City Thunder. It's very apropos in some ways because of the reported reports this week that Jordy Fernandez may be the next head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. And how does that work with timing? Well, this is something we're going to talk about this morning. What are the possibilities of these these this news? And uh, in, in a lot of ways, this is not good for Team Canada. In a lot of ways, but I think that we can make this work. There's a couple of things in our favor. Now, Oren Weisfeld, he's the best Raptors and uh, Canadian journalist to follow on Team Canada stuff. That's just the damn truth. And it doesn't matter if it's the senior men's team. It doesn't matter. It's any Canada Olympic team that has to do with basketball. Oren Weisfeld is your guy to follow because he keeps up on this kind of stuff very closely. Uh, Grange is also reporting on this subject also. We'll start with Grange's tweet from uh, yesterday. He's saying the dates are tough. However, national teams scheduled to open camp in late June in Toronto and be in Vegas beginning July the 8th and then leave for Europe after the game with the USA on July the 10th. NBA Summer League, for example, runs July 12th to 24th. Olympics are 27th to the 11th. So there is optimism that by getting hired so early, it gives everyone a head start on planning accordingly. So Fernandez can undertake all that's necessary with the Nets, hiring staff, moving his family, preparing for his first training camp, etc., and still lead Team Canada at the Olympics. This is a big deal because, you know, in the presser yesterday, they had the end of season presser for Darko. Grange asked him specifically about his summer last year. And how it was setting up the team culture for the Raptors. And well, Darko said, I was on the phone all the time. He spent a lot of time calling people and talking to them, trying to build his coaching staff, trying to get people involved that he wants to get involved. And that is a process. And that takes some time. Now, the Olympics are different than the FIBA World Cup. And this is the good thing. This is the thing. And even Darko talked about this in his press conference yesterday was the schedule for RJ and Kelly this summer playing for Team Canada. Well, FIBA World Cup was more closer to the next season. It was kind of in August, going into September. Well, the Olympics are more central to the middle of the summer. And this, in some ways, is really, really good for a bunch of reasons. The Olympic uh, program will start around July, the beginning of July, when the team will come together and practice and start getting together and get real serious. And then, uh, of course, the competition will be in July. So there will be some time, unlike last year with the FIBA World Cup, for all the people that are involved in the Olympics to have things happen afterwards. In a lot of ways, uh, Dennis Schroeder came straight from FIBA World Cup to the Toronto Raptors last season. And uh, that's not totally going to be the case with the schedule for the Olympics because the Olympics are more in the middle of the summer. So that is actually something that is going to be really, really helpful. Uh, as Oren's going to put uh, in his tweets, uh, he says, uh, he uh, uh, Jordy will have to miss summer league if the Nets will allow it, as Grange points out. But certainly the sooner the better for Jordy to get a head coaching gig. He has uh, two and a half months before training camp for Team Canada to set the start can presumably get a lot done. So can Jordy scramble in the two and a half months from now until the um, the Team Canada convenes together for their practices and stuff like that? Can he get everything that Darko did last summer done in that amount of time? Maybe. Now, one of the other things we got to talk about in this is it sounds like Jordy's keeping his uh, commitments to everybody around him that matters, like the Kings. This is the thing. The Kings played last night. They put the Warriors out. Bravo. Bravo, chap. Bravo putting out uh, the Warriors last night. Uh, he is going to stick with the Kings right up until they're done this season. He is not leaving them in a lurch right in the middle of everything. Mike Brown and the team. 
So he could, if they go far in the playoffs, that could eat into some of his time to get things set up for the Brooklyn Nets. Because in a lot of ways, if Jory's taking this job, he needs to get his shit set up before everything with the Olympics. Then he's got to skip summer league, as Oren said, and come do the Olympic stuff and then come back and, uh, uh, you know, get the finishing touches for the Brooklyn Nets around training camp and preseason. So, yeah, it's a lot. This guy is putting a lot on his plate. And in some ways, I'm really worried. I am very, very worried about this whole situation because there are a couple murmurs. Now, they're saying that he's going to honor his contract and it is a two year contract, guys. So, you know. So he is under contract to coach Team Canada through the Olympics this summer. But, you know, we got really fucked over by Nick yes, last year. Think about this. It was, like, not ideal to have to change our Team Canada head coach three months before we had to go to the Philippines and Japan to compete in the FIBA World Cup. That's no good. That's no good. Now, if some screwed up, crazy-ass shit happens, like Do Joe Sai says, hey, Jordy, we love having you as our Nets coach now, but I really don't like that you're going to be gone for uh, like a month in the middle to go coach Canada. Uh, do you think that you could step down or something like that? If that, What if that shit happens? And all of a sudden, Team Canada is having their third head coach in two years. Uh, and, and they're both times they're switched right before a big fucking event. No wonder Rowan Barrett Sr. looks so pissed in the audience sometimes at our Raptor games recently, not just because of the passing of his younger son, but maybe because there is some weird turmoil around uh, team Canada's senior men's basketball team that, you know, this is a concern that maybe on the horizon, man, maybe they shouldn't have hired such a hot shot like Jordy Fernandez. It was just destined to get an NBA head coaching job very quickly very quickly and soon so it's a mess in some ways but you know what i'm going to say this jordy came in quickly last year did a fantastic job in a very quick time and did very well for us i also believe that jordy is a guy of uh, his word i also believe that he is going to fully come and coach team canada at the olympics this year i'm just going through all the scenarios that can, could possibly happen and honestly, if Team Canada's coach quits or steps down in the in the next two months before we get there for July to Paris, that will be the biggest travesty and tragedy in a lot of ways for the Team Canada program. That you know, it's just messed up. Honestly, in some ways, I would worry about uh, manipulation to try and hurt the uh, the Team Canada senior men's uh, team for basketball uh, because people know they're on the up and up. And they're a little worried. In fact, they got that that crazy ass um, Team USA announced yesterday. <laughs> and I love Dylan Brooks's response. Dylan Brooks is like he's like doing he's saying he's Drake from the the fifty drop and give me foot fifty diss track that just came out last week. Y'all are talking about where he goes off on everybody, everybody. Rick Ross, Travis Scott, Kendrick Lamar. The weekend, he's killing everybody on his diss track. And Dylan Brooks just says, I'm like Drake. I'm like fucking going to have to take on all y'all. Because look, I'm looking at this picture of Team USA in their final roster. They've already announced. Don't worry, Scotty's not on the team, Lex. Don't worry. He's not even close. Because all these old bastards have jumped in all of a sudden. LeBron, Devin Booker, jo uh, Joel Embiid is on the team, apparently. I don't understand that in any kind of way. I don't understand it from a nationality standpoint. I don't understand it from a health standpoint. I don't understand it from a Philadelphia 76er standpoint. Joel Embiid, you are a loser and idiot that you are on the final USA roster. And in a lot of ways, USA is an idiot and a loser for having you on there too. I just got to say that. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton, and Anthony Edwards, the best player from last year. Drew Holiday will be on this team. Bam out of bio, Jason Tatum, uh, and Anthony Davis, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and the last name added yesterday, Kawhi Leonard. So it's like, that's the team. That's the team. None of you young ones. No, Paulo, no, you're not on it this time. No, all you kids who came this, this summer last year, no, you're not on it except your Anthony Edwards and uh, maybe two other guys. Halliburton was on that team last year too. I don't see anybody else that was on that team last year, honestly. 
all these losers don't want to show up for the the the, the FIBA World Cup, but they're all about showing up for the Olympics. These losers, and I'm gonna call them that because I, in the end, I believe they will be losers because you can't. You know, the Dream Team era is over at USA. Y'all think that you can just throw the best, absolute best players in the NBA and you're going to win? No, that's not how team basketball works. In fact, in some ways, if y'all fail in a major way at the Olympics this summer, it's going to be indicative of the death of selfish, let's throw a bunch of superstars together and just add water kind of quick, quick, quick put togethers. Seriously, the team concepts and the longevity and the gelling and the repetitions and the unselfish egos and the actual team roles and role players of all the other countries in the world other than the U.S. will suffice and beat them in some point, at some point. You're going to see it. There will be a, a FIBA team, a team of the Olympics that has a better team concept and just enough to beat that collection of old-ass NBA All-Stars. I'm saying it right now. I'm going to predict it right now. Let Lex be Nostradamus and say this right now. They will be just as just as unsuccessful as the U.S. team last year at FIBA World Cup because the folly of the way they look at this thing. They really look at this the fucked up way and the wrong way. Now, some of those guys that I named for Team USA, some of them are going to have to be role players. Some of them can't be what they are in the NBA. Some of them are going to just have to be, I'm a defensive stopper or, oh, I'm the rebounder. Well, let's try and figure out those roles, Steve Kerr. It's going to be a mess, and this thing is going to be so funny how it goes out. I'm going to tell you that right now the whole thing with the Team USA team. So let me just finish up the rest of my spiel on Jordy Fernandez. And if you guys have any further questions about this thing with Jordy, uh, you let me know in the comments, and I will answer it to the best of my ability. Now, we're going to have a hard uh, cutoff today uh, at 10, 10.30. No more comments after 10.30. If I've been here for an hour, you can get your comment in, and that's it. You're done. You're done for the day. I, I really got to do this starting now because things are going to start getting crazy in my life starting tomorrow. So y'all need to we need to practice this cutoff time and shorten in my streams so that I can go and do the things I need to do now. So, yeah, there's my spiel on Jordy. There are different outcomes that could happen. There is a very, very slight possibility that Jordy will go back on his two year contract because the Nets are demanding him to. That is the worst outcome of this. If we have to have a third head coach for Team Canada basketball right before the Olympics, that will be so fucked up because this will be one of the most successful Olympic uh, turns for Team Canada with so much tumultuousness with the head coaching job. So, yeah, it's a little crazy. It's a little crazy. I think what's going to happen is he's going to be able to do it all, but he's going to wear himself out so crazy, Jordy, Jordy Fernandez, with all this on his plate. It's not going to feel like he has a summer off. Let's just put it that way. And it may be hard for him to be like, he may have a hard time with the Nets next year. Let's just put it that way. But he can't pass up this opportunity. I understand. But man, I also worry, is he going to have in the back of his head thinking about the Nets over and over again in his head while he is supposed to be thinking about Canada and coaching them in Paris? So man, there's I hate this situation in some ways. It was inevitable because Jordy is just like that. But at the same time, it's really not ideal. And if they could have waited one more summer to try and get him hired into a head coaching job in the NBA, that would have been great if it could have been after the Paris Olympics. But it is what it is. We do. We have to just deal with life on life's terms as life comes at us. And in some ways, we want things to be fair and great for uh, Jordy Fernandez, for sure. But yeah, man, I'm worried about how much he's putting on his plate this summer. It's a little, yeah. All right. So should we do uh, the let's do let's do the first thing first. Let's uh, go ahead and do the wild card part of the day, which is basically me opening up this pack of cards. My my niece and nephew gave me these cards for Christmas and they said, Uncle Lex, we want to see you open cards on your show and react to them. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know what? That's really nice. That was crazy. It's like they're producers of my show. They came up with this next segment that I'm about to do with y'all, my niece and nephew, when I saw them at Christmas. So, yeah, I've got a, an NBA hoops pack, and it's got the uh, Thompson twins on it. Hold me now. I'm holding you a pack of cards. Open me. I'm going to open you. <laughs> 
All right, yeah, and I'm looking at him blind, obviously, and I'm going to just react who's in there. There's none of this classic card. We'll do the classic card still, but no, you're not getting extra points. It's just going to be me looking at who's in the pack and kind of talking about it. You know what? It's dark in here. Turn on the light. <laughs> Turn on your hot light. Let it shine wherever you go. Yeah, it's raining in uh, Toronto right now. And uh, it's dark. And I'm like, All right, why don't you just turn the light on, Lex? What's wrong with you, man? All right. The first card is, wow, this is very interesting. This is a really good card, guys. I got Kevin Durant. Look, Kevin Durant on the Suns. That's a new card because you see him on the Suns. Kind of cool. What's it say on the back? Let's see if I can read it. Enter Kevin Durant. Okay. Yeah, that's boring text. That's not very interesting. But yeah, that's a pretty cool card. Kevin Durant, a uh, hoops card from this past year. Of course, the Suns. I have mixed feelings about how the Suns will do. I really do. I was on Twitch yesterday for two hour, two or three hours with Terrence Ross. Yeah, former son and former teammate of Kevin Durant. And he was. we were talking to him. We asked him all kinds of crazy questions. And I found out a lot of very interesting things about uh, all kinds of stuff. Terrence Ross told me yesterday that he has taken shrooms, that he took them by accident. <laughs> we also talked about cannabis in the NBA, and he says that uh, the players use cannabis just as much as they always did. It's just the NBA doesn't test for that anymore, and they don't have to worry about it anymore. So he said that cannabis use did not go up because uh, the new rules in the NBA about cannabis. Uh, they just they don't worry about getting tested at this point is what he said. And he did admit himself that he is a cannabis user himself. Yeah, we talked about wrestling. We talked about all kinds of stuff. We asked him who was the best bucket in the league that he played with. And, of course, Durant was really at the top of the list with DeRozan. Durant and DeRozan, two best bucket getters that he ever played with in his career. He was telling me all kinds of crazy inside stuff like his M welcome to the NBA moment was in practice for the Raptors long, long time ago. And it was DeMar that gave it to him that uh, the coach, Coach Casey, by the way, it's his birthday. Happy birthday, Dwayne Casey. He's one of the birthdays today. Uh, he had to guard DeMar in practice really early in his rookie rookie uh, year, and he could not stop DeMar in any kind of way. And that was his welcome to NBA moment was DeMar in practice on the Raptors when he first started. So much to talk about. Oh, my gosh. Ross, you are amazing, man. I feel like I bonded with him a bit. We talked about all the playoff matchups, and he was telling me how he feels about them. He has no faith in the Lakers, even though he's a classically a Lakers fan. And his pick to who he thinks is going to win the NBA championship is Oklahoma City. He, in fact, is rooting for them to win. Uh, Terrence Ross, uh, formerly of the Raptors, the Magic, and the Phoenix Suns. Now, also, Ross is going to be working during the playoff game for the Orlando Magic and the Cleveland Cavaliers. He will be doing the radio broadcast as the color guy for the Magic's radio station during those playoff games. And he's very excited about that. He's talking about how he is very much pursuing a broadcasting career at this point after retirement. So, yeah, very interesting and cool. Once again, I, I love Twitch because, honestly, there's a reason why I know Terrence Ross and Scotty Barnes because you can directly talk to them and they will answer you. And it's the most amazing thing in the world. It is so amazing. I, I Seriously, at some point, nobody else was talking. and It was just basically a, a back and forth between me and Terrence for like 45 minutes about wrestling, talking about wrestlers and all this kind of stuff. He was really into it. We were talking about the history of wrestling, all kinds of stuff. He's very he's very interested in the backstage kayfabe stuff about wrestling right now. And that's an expertise of mine. So we were having a very interesting, fun conversation. I honestly feel like I bonded with him. And like Ross is one of my friends now because it was just so him and I just talking to each other. It was weird. It was very weird. All right, let's look at some more of these cards. I'm yammering on. I say, oh, I want to cut off, but then I talk forever. Here's a rookie card, guys. Look who I got. It's the one half of the jersey swap. That's right. It's Anthony Black. There you go. There's an Anthony Black rookie card. Once again, all these cards that I show on my show, most of them will be available at the Raptor Freak meet and greet. The next one, I'll bring them and you can take some of these for free. I'm not even going to sell them to you. So if anybody's interested in this Anthony Black rookie card, that might be able to be yours. If you're coming to Monique Lawrence's birthday party on June the 8th, Saturday at the NBA restaurant in Toronto. I will be there with this Anthony Black rookie card. If you come down there, 
And, you know, you got to buy a buffet, eat some of the food with us. We'll sit at a big table like a family and we'll have some good meals. And we'll hopefully you can bring some gift, a gift or something for money because it is her birthday. And we're going to do a birthday party for the super fan. So, yeah, I'll have the cards down there to entice you with my black Anthony Black uh, card. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Here we go. Who's next in here? What is this pack? Holy crap. Look, we got the guy who's sitting out. We got Durant, and now we got Giannis. This is like a really good pack. I got a Giannis and a Kumto straight-up card from this this year. He's, it's been said that Giannis will not be playing in the uh, beginning of the series in the next in this round coming up. I guess because of the, well, we don't know. The game's tonight. It will be the winner of my um, – who is it? No, they we do know who's playing them. The Pacers are playing them. That's right because they switch. New York is the one who's up above. So Giannis is not going to be playing for the first couple games in the series against the Indiana Pacers in the first round. Oh, boo hoo 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 What a nightmare season for the Bucks this year. Really bad season. It's only – you know, they're going to have the last failure. It's in, it's in undeniable. We I talked about this with Ross yesterday. I said, you know, Ross, Ross said this. He's like, yeah, Doc's not going to get him anywhere in the playoffs. He said that himself. He knows that from the inside. And he's been around Doc. He said he likes Doc. He, I think he actually was coached by Doc just briefly or something. I don't know what he said exactly. But he he also agrees that Milwaukee's doomed in the, in the playoffs because Doc Rivers is their coach. Terrence Ross said that. <laughs> That's funny. All right, but you got a Giannis. So hey, you like this Giannis card? You can come get it. NBA restaurant, June the eighth. Oh wow, this is my favorite. I'm keeping this one. Y'all don't get this one. This is our guy from Fort Erie, Leonard Miller. Well, I've got a Leonard Miller rookie card in front of me right here. Look at that card. Look how how you know he's really good too. Like I was right. I was like, damn, Leonard Miller is he going to be a good NBA player or not? And I was like, I think he is. And well, he had a fantastic rookie year for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And he's still playing. He's going to be in this playoff. And honestly, he is so good. His body is just a really good NBA body. And he does have a skill set. And when he played us this year, he played really well. So go on now, Kent, Canadian Leonard Miller, rookie card. Holding, I'm holding in my hand right now. I love it. I love it. That's really cool. Oh, okay. Here's Shaq Lindsay's favorite of the, of the year. Shaq Lindsay loves him some Zach Levine. There's another Zach Levine card. Now, we had a Zach Levine card from before, remember? It was like a very early Zach Levine. Maybe I can find it and dig it up, and we'll do a compare and contrast. Where's that other Zach Levine card that we had like earlier this se uh, season on the classic card? There it is. We're going to put them together, and we're going to look at them and see the growth of Zach Levine. <laughs> his rookie card to his card for this year. All right. there. Oh, let's put them in order. I think that's right. Let me put them this way. This way? No, this way. This way. So they're in order. Okay, where oh there. Okay. So the there's Minnesota Zach Levine. And why am I not able to hold them right? Oh, it's because it's opposite. All right, yeah. You see Minnesota Zach Levine with hair, and then there's the one for this year, Zach Levine on the Bulls. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that he much more athletic pose on the the um the newer one. Yeah, very, very cool. I like that. Um, let's see. So yeah, look at that pose. That's not bad. That's not bad. Zach, Zach Levine playing uh today. In the playing game against uh, the Hawks, and the uh, yeah the the winner will find out who they play also tonight between Miami and Philadelphia. I have the ref crews for today. It's actually kind of interesting who's refing tonight. Uh, Nick Nurse and uh, Eric Spolstra. What a great coaches matchup. Uh, Philly fans are saying, man, we have the best coach in the East except for Miami's. And well, in the playing, you're gonna play the best coach in the East against Nick Nurse. A lot of Philly fans are saying the biggest upgrade from last year is our coach. We have more faith in our coach to kick some butt and do good things. Well, your crew chief is Tony Brothers. That's right. You get Tony Brothers tonight for your Miami-Philadelphia game. The backup, the no, not the backup. The second ref is Bill Kennedy. That's not bad. Tony Brothers, Bill Kennedy, and Drake Lover, Mitchell Irvin. So drop and give us 50, Nick. Drop and give us 50. That's right. Because you got Tony Brothers, Bill Kennedy, and Mitchell Irvin. Mark Davis is refereeing the game in Chicago. That's fishy. That's fishy. That man's from Chicago. So if Atlanta goes out, yeah, and Mark Davis is helping them, look out. Tyler Ford, the uh, superstar young ref, is the second ref, and Nick Booker. Yeah, those are interesting ref crews. Of course, Tony Brothers going to manage the, the Heat Sixers game tonight. Of course. Speaking of the Sixers, here's a Sixers card in this pack. DeAnthony Melton. 
had a pretty good season. Some people in this stream were saying, hey, we should get DeAnthony Melton this offseason. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. DeAnthony Melton, that's a nice looking card. These cards are nice, these hoops cards. I like the design on them. Here's another. This I guess this isn't a rookie card at this point. That's a Christian Brune of the champion Denver Nuggets. We're talking about how the, maybe they could repeat uh, this year. I don't know. Uh, Ross is thinking that Denver's pretty good still and that they're still a big favorite to do very well. Obviously, now that they have the Lakers in the first round, <laughs> that's hilarious. Of course, Scott Foster was refereeing the Laker game last night. It was close. The Pelicans made a valiant effort and came back and made it interesting at the end. But the script had to be written. We know this is just a damn truth. They, they lose this, Scott Foster, if they put out LeBron in the play-in. They got to think about, well, we need him to be in at least the first round to milk out like six or five or six or seven games, even if they lose to the Nuggets in the first round. Now, I could say this. I'm going to predict this kind of, and I don't like it. I'm not saying it because I want it to happen. The NBA may manipulate this first round matchup with the Lakers and the Nuggets to help LeBron get past it. So be very wary of the manipulation of the referees and strange shit happening this year, because in some ways they don't like the narrative of the Nuggets kicking the Lakers ass and putting them out every year. So I could very much see in some ways they don't necessarily want the uh, Nuggets to repeat either them trying to take them out this in the first round by helping LeBron get past them somehow, some way. So it's kind of messed up. But there's a uh, Christian Brune, kind of a cool card. I like how a lot of these cards have them dunking. That's kind of cool. All right, let's keep going. Here's another very young player, Canadian also, Shaden Sharp. Shaden Sharp of the Portland Trailblazers card. Pretty cool. That's a cool card, I think, along with the Leonard Miller. I like getting the Canadian kids. Is this a rookie? Yeah, it is a rookie card. So very, very cool. All right, next one is Jabari Smith of Houston. And Fred Van Vliet's big man now, one of his big men. He's a good, promising young player. Uh, who else did I get? I want to go through these. Uh, oh, wow, here's old head Derrick Rose. And he's a Memphis Grizzlies uh, card for Derrick Rose. He said he wants to return next year and play for the Memphis Grizzlies still, even though he's hurt this year, this past year. Uh, and, of course, he's in a New York jersey in the picture. <laughs> All right. Uh, Derrick Rose was actually named by Terrence Ross as one of the fastest players he ever played against. Number one on that list, T. Ross said yesterday, the fastest player that he ever had to deal with was John Wall. And uh, But he named a bunch of people that he was like, yeah, these are all quick guys. These guys are all very, very super quick. He said the hardest person, the, the most defensive, best defensive guard to play is Drew Holiday. He actually named Drew Holiday as the best defensive guard in the league right now. So, yeah, very cool to hear from a former player like Ross. He was breaking down so much stuff. And one of the other things that Ross said yesterday is that NBA coaches are underrated and that people need to respect them way more. They put in so much work, he said, and it's a thankless job. And they get so much grief when they fail. And even when they succeed, it's not often they get the kudos they deserve. So Ross was, because somebody asked him, uh, Ross, are NBA coaches overrated or underrated? He said, definitely underrated. You don't understand how hard these guys work. And it's not an easy profession in any kind of way. So Ross shedding some light on why people should respect the coaches a little bit better. Seriously. Uh, all right, look, look who I got next. Who is this? Oh, that's Fontinino, Fontino or whatever. He's a rookie for uh, the, the the Jazz, Simone Foncio or whatever. Okay. He's older, though. He came later. Uh, let's see. Who else is in here? Oh, this is a garbage card. I don't even know why they made this card. There's a Mason Plumlee's card. <laughs> <laughs> Who would want the Mason Plumlee Clippers card? Come on now. Come on now. You're joking with me. Come on. Who would want that? All right, we only got a few more. No, wait. Actually, this pack is loaded. Holy crap. All right, what is this? Oh, this is one of the twins. One last night, Keegan Murray. And there's a Keegan Murray card. And this guy had a really big game earlier in the season and, and said, yeah, Raptors, you want him? Well, he just dropped like a crazy amount of threes. And uh, we don't want you to get him now. But yeah, Murray was on our trade targets to be in the season, possibly for Siakam. Yeah, he's not a bad player. His brother injured uh, Chris Boucher. Uh, let's see. Here we go. All right. All right. There's two left. All right. I want to do this one last because this is actually really special, it looks like. Oh, yeah. I know what that is. Wow. All right. Here's this one's very cool. This one's cool. This is a Portland card with Scoot Henderson on it. And it says, greetings from Portland. Kind of cool. What's it say on the back? It's like a postcard. It says, rookie greeting, Scoot Henderson. Look at the little uh, stamp 
and it made it look like really like like a little postcard card. That is cool. I like this design. I like this design a lot. You like this Scoot Henderson welcome greetings for Portland uh, card? You can get this at uh, Monique's birthday party. Yeah, I'll have it with me. Look, I might even mail it to you if you don't come. Yeah, look out. Look out. All right, here's the last one. And we had one of these the other day, and I gave it to Chris. Yeah, there's another jersey card, guys. Like uh, a played jersey is in the card, like a piece of the jersey. And it's very interesting. It says rookie remembrance. So this is from a rookie year of a player, and it's Donovan Mitchell. Now, look at that 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 little square in there. That's a that's a jersey. You touch it, that's fabric. And this is uh, fabric from Donovan's rookie rookie year jersey. So if you like this, you can have this too. Like I don't I don't care about this. I I'm not a big fan of Donovan Mitchell. But if you like Donovan Mitchell and you want a jersey worn card by him, I don't know how much it's worth. And I'm crazy. I'll give it to you if you come to Monique's birthday party. That's what I'm saying today, y'all. So this is a, the, the wild card Wednesday. Open it up the cards. Fun of the day. Yeah, these are too easy. Y'all would guess these too easy. So I'm not going to do the classic card. But yeah, that's what we do on wild card Wednesday. Let me see. All right, what am I going to say? My starting five best cards of the day. I could do that as a little fun regular thing when I do this. My five favorite cards in here are, let me see, that one. That one, eh, I like that card. That's cool. Even if I don't like the player, uh, that's three, three cards right now. Let me get two more. That one, and yeah, that one just because it's a rookie and and uh, stuff like that. So my five favorite cards, counting down backwards. I really like the the design of this card. I just think that this is so cool. This this postcard. So number five. Number four, really just because of what he did with Grady was hilarious. And this is a rookie card. It's kind of cool. Uh, number three, uh, our Canadian guy that can hoop like crazy, Shaden Sharp. That's a cool card to have, a rookie Shaden Sharp. Uh, number two, I like the Durant card. The Durant card looks nice. I like the, like the way it looks. Of course, it's Kevin Durant. That's a pretty high-quality player. And then my favorite card of the day, the one I'm going to keep, is this Leonard Miller rookie card. Yeah, Leonard. Yes, Leonard. Yes, Leonard. So much fun. All right. That was a fun part. The wild card Wednesday section of our game day. I want to show you all the box again, just so you can see where I'm keeping the wild card Wednesday stuff in. This is a Raptors 2-5 box for season ticket holders from that season. And they came with the, all the tickets for the season came in this box for my cousin and, and her husband when they, they're season ticket holders. And he's like, Alex, you want this at Christmas? He gave it to me for Christmas. Very nice gift by Rick. I appreciate it. All right, let's get in the comments now. Wow, that took me a half hour to do all that. That's going to be interesting to kind of gauge. I don't know. Was that a fun sec section? I think those cards were cool. All right, let's see. Chris is saying, fun night in the NBA. Keon Ellis is my new JFL, laugh out loud. But the Warriors are done. I, for one, am happy about it. Thompson goes 0 for 10 from 3. Wow. All right, this is very interesting. I'm glad the Warriors are out too. They were on my list. They need to go out. And what is NBA doing this morning? Damage control. Zach Lowe writing an article immediately this morning. It's almost like he's scared. It's almost like he's scared. Oh, the, the, the writing's on the wall. He wrote an article on ESPN. You can go look at it on the front page. And it says, why this disappointing finish might not signal the end for the Warriors. This motherfucker just can't let it go. You know, meanwhile, they're like ripping apart us, trying to say every which way Kawhi will leave. Kawhi will leave. He's going here. And meanwhile, they're trying to hold the Golden State Warriors together as long as possible. They can't. It's crazy. He's justifying how the Warriors could keep this core together. Why does it make sense, Zach? It doesn't win. If they want to continue to be like this and spin their wheels for years and years, that's great. Go ahead. But why do you hold on to this dream of the Warriors being intact with their dynasty team forever? Like these motherfuckers have been together 10 years. And what? it seems like their run is over. Why are you holding on so hard, Zach Lowe? Why are you showing your Homer colors for Golden State Warriors? Because that's what this is. If you're a regular journalist, why are you putting this all together? Is it because you're ordained by ESPN, the big media machine? Well, the Warriors would have been a great like attraction for our league. We need to keep them intact. We're in trouble. We're losing the Warriors, and we're losing LeBron. You know, Are they freaking out because the Golden Boys and the marketable people that they want to market are, are changing? It's not going to be the same. Either way, it's crazy. Chris Paul is not making the playoffs for the first time in like a long ass time. And it's hilarious to me. It's hilarious. 
So yeah, you good, good job, Kings. I appreciate y'all for doing what you did last night. That's right. I appreciate y'all for putting them out. That's right. You're saying Keon Ellis is your new JFL. Well, Doc Ellis was spoken of by Terrence Ross yesterday on his stream. He started talking about this old MLB pitcher from way back. And he said, Rabbit Streak, do you realize that Doc Ellis once threw a no hitter on a hit of acid? And I was like, I did not know about this story. Honestly, I'm not a big baseball head. But uh, Terrence Ross retold the story of Doc Ellis to his Twitch stream yesterday. And it was fascinating to hear about how a kid took a dose of acid on the day he was going to pitch an MLB game because he didn't realize he was supposed to pitch. And then he went there and pitched it and pitched a no hitter. It was crazy. Apparently, Doc, Doc Ellis's coat catcher was wearing shiny things around his wrist and he could tone it into on that with his trippy ass uh, Lucy in the Sky and Diamond's eyes. He could see the, where the catcher was because he had very much a, a reflective tape on his arms to show where he was. And that's what he threw it to. Very fascinating story and fun to hear it from Ross last night, very, yesterday, not yet, last night. Uh, Monique is here. Good to see the super fan, Monique Lawrence. Uh, good morning, Raptor Freak family. What a day yesterday. Jordy News, Team Canada, Darko Presser, Dylan Brooks, etc. just to name a few. Yeah, touched on a couple of these. Of course, Darko did his interview for the end of the season half hour i did watch it i did go back and watch a lot of the interviews with the players from the day before i have some gripes with what happened with that we'll talk about it uh yes tomorrow in some ways i'm waiting for Masai's presser today he's going to talk at 11 this morning he's going to talk in about an hour from now so that's another reason why we need to get done is because Masai's end of season presser is going to be at 11 this morning that's confirmed and in some ways i want to watch that one too and then we'll do a Thursday think tank tomorrow where a couple of y'all can call me on the phone and we'll talk about how we felt about the end of season pressers. So I want to get all of them out of the way and we got to see Ujiri still first. And then I'll really talk about what everybody was saying on all kinds of different directions tomorrow. So today it's kind of a focus on Jordy news, the wild card stuff and, uh, you know, team Canada more slant than Raptors today. Just just to kind of give a uh, difference. So, uh, Mo, we will definitely talk about those tomorrow. But the Jordy news, let's talk about it. And what do you think about it? And, yeah, I love that Dylan Brooks stuff. Dylan Brooks is such a badass. I have even more respect for him for saying this because the analogy is apropos. What he's saying, he feels like Drake and drop and give me 50. And he's exactly right. It's like they got to get all those guys to come. All these guys, you got to get them together to come and beat Team Canada, Team Germany, Team Serbia. Uh, you know, oh, my gosh, what losers. That you got to go and do that. In some ways, you know what? To me, this is like paying for a team. It's like a shark kind of thing. It's like, oh, we're just going to. I, I get it. They're all American. No, they're not. They're not all American, but mostly American. And uh, they can want to serve for their country and stuff like that. I'm telling you, this kind of shit will blow up in their face. The pattern of this has ha has held uh, since the 90s. Is like these teams, they throw them together. What? LeBron was on a team before and they lost miserably even though they had every talented player from the NBA they could have. So I'm saying the pattern for them to fail is there before. Longevity, connection of a team like Lithuania that's been playing together for 15 years, that matters. And throwing a collection of guys all together at the last minute, it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, Chris is saying, so yesterday as well, Toronto is on the WNBA expansion list. Awesome. So they released another... Uh, uh, list of the team, the cities that are being considered for the second expansion team after the Golden State one. I don't think that they expect uh, something to happen quick enough so it can happen for next year. I think that they're saying that the 14th team added to the WNBA will be the year after next year. So that may be more realistic for us to be in there, but we should get it. Honestly, I don't, I think that they've done too much to, to uh, uh, explore this market and found too much good things about it that it's just too attractive to not come to Toronto and give us a WNBA team. So, yeah, it's going to happen, Chris. Uh, super fan most saying Toronto has been on for a while, Chris. That's right. Well, no, he's just saying because he saw a new list. And because of last year, denying it with Rogers and MLSE, you know, we thought it was dead in the water, that there's just no way that Toronto would get a WNBA team. Well, Larry Tannenbaum's a hero, and Teresa Resch is a badass. And that's what I have to say about that. Trevor Jay is here. Good morning, Raptors. Kings send Golden State home. That's right. And on that note, Trevor Jay is here. We're going to do the Cosmic Card of the Day. And we're going to get one of y'all to guess uh, this co classic card. Not one of the like, new ones that I just showed you. 
Uh, and you get 100 points added to your Raptor Freak trivia score. Oh, all right, let's see. All right, let's see. Who did we get? Oh, this is cool. All right, whoever gets this one, you'll have you'll have my heart because this is a player that uh, was an old favorite of mine back in the day. It really was. And this is not. This will be easy to some of y'all. Uh, some of y'all will get this right away, but some of y'all that are not old heads will probably not know who the hell this is. But the old heads will know who this. All right, so we're at Fiercey's ten oh six cutoff on the bottom, and uh, here we go. So the cutoff today will be ten thirty, guys. Just in case, unless there's too much in there. All right, here we go. Who is that, guys? Whoever writes the full name in first will get the points. This is a little bit old school. Look at that Orlando jersey. Look how old it is. Does anybody know who that is? In some ways, this is very easy. There you go. Ahmet got it. Look at that. Ahmet was born in 2009, and he knew who Scott Skiles was. That's awesome. I'm very impressed by you, Ahmet the Goat. Uh, Smooth was right in there after him. Yeah, that's Scott Skiles. Scott Skiles. I saw a play in person in Tallahassee a long time ago on the Orlando Magic in uh, very early in their expansion years against Reggie Miller and the Pacers, and it was so cool. It was an NBA preseason game in Tallahassee uh, trying to get people to come out, kind of like when the Raptors go out west and play in Vancouver and Edmonton. Well, they were trying to expand uh, interest in the Magic in Florida, so they came and did a preseason game in Tallahassee at the Leon County Civic Center and Scott Skiles was the star for the Magic at that game. Uh, it was like Nick Anderson, Dennis Scott, uh, that team. Before Shaq, Shaq wasn't on the team yet. This was pre-Shaq, so this is really early Magic. And Reggie Miller was the leader of the Pacers, of course. So it was very cool to see Reggie and Scott Skiles play in Tallahassee in an NBA preseason game. That was very interesting experience for me. Wow, I'm really impressed with Amit. Amit was in the Terrence Ross live stream with me for a brief second near the end. It was kind of funny. We're talking and we're talking about our knowledge of cl classic wrestling. And I was saying, yeah, I stopped watching wrestling in 2003. And Amit says, I was born in 2009. <laughs> That's so funny. And Ross, Ross is, uh, it is pretty funny. In some ways we realized like, okay, Lex is an old ass motherfucker. And uh, he's in a world with a lot of kids. In some ways, like Ross was saying on his tweet stream yesterday at some point, yeah, a lot of y'all kids probably never seen a Ch Ch Cheech and Chong movie. He's like, he's talking about because they're adding Cheech and Chong to Call of Duty. And he's like, y'all probably don't even know who they are because he, he just figures everybody on Twitch is very young. And then I get on there and I'm just like, yeah, Up in Smoke, Corsican Brothers. I start naming all their, their movies. And then like I say, Dave's not here, man. <laughs> and it's like, okay, you're showing your age, Lex, that you have seen all the Cheech and Chong movies. You're hanging out with the... <laughs> Terrence Ross, I think he gets a little freaked out. I think they do because they just assume everybody on Twitch is going to be very young. Well, the Raptor Streak is uh, infiltrated as an old head. Trust me, I'm there. <laughs> so thank you, Trevor J. Once again, for commissioning the classic consummate ca card of the day today. Scott Skiles, look at him triumphantly holding his hands up like he's running like Terry Fox. You go on, uh, Scott Skiles. Yeah, he, he is awesome. Scott Skiles was a very cool early uh, uh, magic player. Yeah. The Orlando Magic people love him. Yeah. Chris is saying, uh, yeah, Mo, I know, but it could happen. They are saying Nashville is not likely next, though. Who knows? Oh, you're hearing buzz that Nashville's in, in, in line? Ah, that's not as attractive as Toronto. Get, seriously, think about what you're saying. You know, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see how it all works out. We're going to get this, though. We're going to get this. Teresa Resch don't switch jobs just to mess around. Seriously, she ain't shooting a miss just like OG. She's going to leave her job at MLSE to go try and do this with Larry. She's doing this to make it happen. Trust me. Trust me. Nako's here. Good to see Nako the Nacho. My good friend, Gerald. Gerald. Yes, Nako. I hope you've been very well, my guy. I am going to get a vehicle tomorrow, Nako the Nacho. So I am going to be on the road just like you soon, my guy. Yeah, I'm going to get a vehicle tomorrow. That's going to really change everything. Trust me. It's going to be weird, man. He's saying, I called the Shanghai Sharks. They don't want Clay Thompson. Boom, boom, burn, burn, burn. I'm giving you a dunk because that's a burn and a half. Nako the Nacho coming with the, the disc to Clay Thompson. I love it. I love it. All right, yeah, you're getting a Vince Carter 15, my guy. You got 15 dunks. Like the Vince Carter. Yeah, I'm going to say this. Ross said this yesterday about Clay Thompson. He said that Clay Thompson is actually a very underrated defender. He was naming a list of the best defenders in the league. And near the end, right around like after 12 or 13 names, he said, Oh, and Clay Thompson, 
Clay Thompson is actually a better defender than he gets credit for, is what he was saying yesterday. Uh, Trevor Jason Kawhi got the final spot for the USA Olympic team. Yeah, this is cool. I like this. I like this. We talked about the Clippers' chances in the playoffs, Ross and I. And, uh, you know, we basically both decide the same thing. It's their health. In some ways, we both agree that the Clippers are functioning right, unlike sometimes in the last couple of years where it doesn't seem like they are fitting. But these old heads know the clock is ticking, and this may be their best chance this year, especially since they had really good health out of Kawhi for most of the year. So it'll be interesting to see the destiny of the Clippers. Now, Ross does not have any faith in the Mavericks. He said two teams he knows that we're not going to go anywhere in the playoffs are the Lakers and the Mavericks. And I said, well, what about Gafford? What about P.J. Washington? They just got some new defensive bigs. How will that factor in? I think that the Clippers will beat the Mavs, but it, it's going to be close and it'll be a fight. The reason why I think the Clippers are better than people are saying is because just because they have those big four, you're overlooking the fact that this is a complete roster with a lot of good role players around it. People like Norman Powell, people like Zubak. So there's there's a, actually a very good team on the Clippers with four very nasty Hall of Fame legends. And that's the thing. Russell can go to the bench and be a role player for the Clippers. If Harden and Kawhi and Paul George are playing together right, they can win this whole thing. Don't get it twisted. But like Ross and I both said, it's going to depend on the health of Leonard and Harden and George and Westbrook. Those guys that have to be there, and they'll be there. And if they're there, they can win. So, yeah, we were a little high on the Clippers' chances in the playoffs. Uh, Chris is saying Team USA is unbeatable. I don't believe that. What are you fucking saying? Come on, Chris. This is not true because history has proven this is not true. They've done these super teams, uh, throwing them together at the last minute, and they fail miserably. In fact, last summer is a symptom of that. I know this is a little bit higher caliber, but we've got to understand also that we're all getting reinforcements for this summer. We're going to get Jamal Murray added to Team Canada. Serbia could honestly get that big guy from Nuggets if he doesn't go all the way to the championship this year. Nikola Jokic could suit up for Serbia this summer, and that could be a whole different game. So, Chris, don't count your chickens before they have hatched. And do not believe just the bullshit that Team USA is unbeatable. <laughs> no, I look at that picture on Twitter of who's in that picture, and I'm like, this is going to be a mess. This is going to be a fucking mess. I'm telling you right now. Trevor's saying, Chris, you know it will be funny if the U.S. does not win the gold medal and make it out full of superstars. Yeah, and anything less than winning it all is a failure at this point with that team they just put together. So I'm going to tell you, they're going to fail. They're not going to win the gold. Another team will win the gold. They may medal. They may be silver. They may be bronze, but they're not going to win the gold. They could even be like they were at FIBA World Cup and fourth, losing to Canada in the bronze medal game while Canada takes those medals and puts them around their shoulders uh, like they did last summer in front of Anthony Edwards and all them. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, uh, there's going to be a lot of American braggadocio this whole summer leading up to the Olympics, and they're going to overvalue, and they're going to get cocky, and they're going to get confident. In some ways, the team may mirror that in the when way they see each other all together and like, ah, we got this. Yeah, that's how fucking teams get beat because they think they got it too easy. That's right. So I'm not going to say this. Uh, Chris is saying, I would love it to happen, but I know it's not possible. What are you talking about? It's not possible. Chris, you've obviously not watched international senior men's basketball in the last 20 years. Seriously, you have obviously not watched it. Have you not seen the U.S. fail? at a lot of international competitions in the last 20 years? Yes, they have. And they have a high probability for this to happen. I don't understand why you say it's not possible. It is for sure possible. Once again, I'll say it. This team is getting thrown together at the last minute and add water. And they think that this is going to work. When there's teams that have been playing together since they were teenagers, and now they're men in their 30s. You think about this. Seriously, Serbia, Lithuania, Germany. These are all teams that have been together as a unit for like a decade. Dennis Schroeder has worked with his German teammates for a decade, and they know each other like the back of each other's hands, and there's no egos. There's guys that know their roles, and they're going to fit right in them. Some of the things that will happen in the USA is that they're going to have to figure out their roles, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and if some of these jabronis do not know their roles, well, it may be the SmackDown Hotel for the USA team because they're trying to figure out little piddly shit. The teams have all their shit figured out coming in and they're trying to not step on each other's toes or they are stepping on each other's toes and they're having problems figuring out who's where and what. 
I'm telling you, the only way this works is if they're the original dream team and they have no ego and Scottie Pippen's willing to come off the bench and just take two shots a game. That's what I'm saying. In some ways, the old team-oriented headed um, NBA player will be more willing and can make this work because that original dream team, a lot of guys took a back seat in major ways and they didn't care. But the, the you know last summer, Brandon Ingram was upset because he didn't get to play as much for Team USA last summer. So I'm telling you, this shit's going to happen. Even with the old heads, there's going to be some sort of problems for real. Yeah, yeah, this team is unreal, impossible for them to lose. Chris, man, you're so off on your takes, bro. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if you're just like just thinking of stuff in your head. Oh, I know what Lex will be like. Yeah, this is stupid. What I'll say this. I'll say something like this. I just uh, recently I find that your takes are just really yeah, bad. <laughs> bad. Now, let's see. Uh, Tr Trevor saying Blake Griffin retires from the NBA. Yeah, that was announced yesterday. Blake Griffin retired from the NBA. I told Ross. I, I was like, hey, because you wrote me, Trevor, in the Facebook chat. You said Blake Griffin is retired because Trevor says breaking news on our Facebook chat. And I turned around and just wrote it in to Terrence on his Twitch right then. He's like, oh, Blake Griffin retired. Uh, everybody's copping me. That's what he said. <laughs> He's joking, of course, but I thought that was funny that Ross was saying, yeah, everybody's uh, 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 copying me now. It was people are retiring. It's pretty funny. Uh, Mo saying Grange went from cool last week to total idiot in his latest article. Grange has always been a total idiot all, all the time. It's just the difference is when he's doing his job like a journalist should or when he's doing a, a covert op-ed. And while he was doing a covert op-ed in the article you're alluding to from yesterday, uh, Michael Grange writing an article about Media Day and how the optimism around the Raptors may be foolish. You know, he's saying all this stuff is like, yeah, the Raptors are saying they're feeling good about coming into the offseason. They're excited to get back to work and to get things going. But are they really realistically a good team? He's saying all this shit. He's he writes an article for Rogers that's supposed to cast doubt and make people feel like, yeah, the Raptors are shaky. The Raptors suck and all this kind of stuff. Fuck you, Michael Grange. Dana and I have this for you, my guy. Yeah, fuck you. He's always going to be the same person. In some ways, it's a very calculated uh, article to make people feel doubt. They, the Raptors did such a good job in their end of season interviews talking about how they're in good place. The Grange had to write some crazy, conflated, confusing bullshit about how they are maybe too pie in the sky or too optimistic or just not grounded in reality is what he's trying to say. Fuck you, Grange. You don't fucking know how much Scotty and Grady will jump this year and how we'll look next year. In some ways, he's trying to make the worry that this is not the right core to put together and invest in in the future because it has no legs to actually win. Fuck you, Michael Grange. That's all I got to say on that right there. That's right. Uh, most saying Grady got his first tattoo, guys. Yeah, this is another thing that happened yesterday is that Grady is showing off his brand new tattoo. I'm on the Instagram uh, stories for him. He said, my dog, best in the city, Creation Inc. And I'll describe the Grady tattoo if you don't know about it yet. This is the one that he talked to Gary about earlier in the season. He's saying he, Gary Trent came in the interview and said, yeah, Gray's going to get a tattoo this summer. And he told me about what it is, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. And you're going to have to wait and see it for yourself. It's pretty cool. So basically, Grady got a very Kansas-oriented tattoo. There's a young boy with a 50 jersey on. It symbolizes him. Now, I don't understand why the number is 50 on there. Is it because that was your mother's number when she played? I think that may be why. And then there's a big, huge, weird, like, it looks like a native uh, 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 totem. Like, it's a horse with a headdress, and it's got the number, the area code of Wichita in the headdress. And it's kind of like it's anointing him. And then the quote is something like, uh, blessed is the child that can, take, can hold his own, is what the tattoo says. And now where it is on his body is, uh, I guess it would be on this side. And on this side of his 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 uh, abdomen, like right on this side, it's a it's a it's a nice tattoo. I mean, it means a lot to him, obviously. I'm not very big on tattoos myself, but yeah, Grady got his first tattoo, and it's a big one. He didn't even start small. It's like about a foot and a half or a foot on his side. So very interesting, Grady getting his tattoo that he said, and it's a very much a shooter's tattoo. May they all fall. For you, Grady, going on down the road. That's what I'm saying about that. Uh, Trevor's saying, according to Coach Darko, Coach is going to be busy this summer with the players. Yeah, I love, like, I, I in some ways I'll dip into this a little bit. Because it does have kind of to do with Jordy's schedule this summer, too. 
Darko is amazing. Darko has our full summer already all planned out. He understands all the key dates. He understands where the players are going to be. He's going to be going to see them in different places. He said basically this yesterday. The Raptors as a team are getting three weeks off. They're going to get the rest of April and the first week of May off. And then on May 6th, they're going to be reconvening together while the playoffs are still going on in different places. He specifically mentioned going to Miami to hang out with Scotty. And uh, IQ in his interview said a lot of the guys are going to be in Miami around that area. So there may be a lot of Raptors practicing and hanging out with each other and vibing in Miami, mostly because Scott's uh, home base is there from his family. And then he's talking about going to Vancouver to hang out with Kelly and also Utah because Kelly has a house in Utah. So they're going to be going and seeking out guys and working with them. Also, Darko is talking to people like Brian Macon and the other personal trainers for the important Raptors and giving them detailed uh, development plans for each of the specific Raptors for, with their uh, their own private coaches that they work with and pay for on their own in the summer to work towards something like this. This is a huge key to why Scotty jumped this year is the conjunction of working between Brian Macon and the Raptors coaching staff. It's like Darko gives Brian stuff that he wants them to work on and he will focus his 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 program for Scotty this summer around the vision and the goals that Darko has for him. And it's awesome. Once again, Darko's saying very much that Scotty wants to be the best defensive player in the league and that he's going to be guarding the toughest guy on the other side of the court. There's all kinds of cool stuff in Darko's thing. But yeah, uh, Darko's going to be very busy this summer. He is going to take some time off now. And he said, if you guys don't play basketball while we are like off, well, play some other sport is what he was saying yesterday. Go swim or play some soccer or just get some physical activity and just keep your body in motion. And don't just sit around and be a couch potato for three weeks and then try and get back into it. Keep in motion. You don't have to play basketball, but do some sort of athletic activity is kind of what he was saying yesterday. Yeah, very interesting stuff. Uh, Mo saying Darko preparing to travel a lot to see the players. Yeah. Yeah, he, I don't know if he's going to see Team Canada play, Mo, but he is definitely going to be around Summer League, and he's definitely going to be going to people's houses and going to see them. Yeah, I don't know if he'll go all the way to Vienna to see Jakob over there. Apparently, Jakob's basketball camp has sold out already now. He's got the opposite of last year when it did get promoted or anything that had poor attendance. Well, they came out full force and uh, uh, advertised it really well, and now it is sold out. You cannot go to Jakob Pertl's basketball camp in vienna austria at this point it's all sold out there's no room there's no room uh let's see chris is saying i try to remove bias from my thinking for example political ideological senses serve to allow whatever to slant one's perception not to see the world as it is but it is how you like to see well i would say this you're you've been conditioned obviously your brain is conditioned in some weird ways i want to tell people there's no real far left in this world in some ways you know, you, it's crazy. Bernie Sanders is really center left. And if we had true leftists, we'd be going to take the means of production and taking it for the people right now. And honestly, if you want to talk about political spectrum, well, in some ways, you, you do not have a clear view of what true left looks like. So I would just say that. Just say that. That's all I want to say about that comment. Uh, in some ways, there's a lot of malarkey coming from Chris once again. Uh, G saying, do you think Embiid and AD stay healthy? The uh, main issue with Team USA is FIBA has fantastic bigs, no third rule, three second rule. So if those guys can stay healthy, is Bam enough? They will exploit that. Yeah, this is a great question. I didn't think you were even going to talk about uh, with uh, Team USA. I thought you were talking about these playoffs. Like you know, in some ways, things could happen with Joel in the playoffs that could really just take him off of Team USA this summer. <laughs> you know, AD the same thing. I mean, we talked about this with Ross yesterday. Once again, like I said, I talked to him for like two hours that uh, the Philadelphia and Lakers futures in the playoffs are totally tied to their centers. If Embiid's hurt all of a sudden, well, Philly's done. If Davis is hurt all of a sudden, well, their Lakers are done. And in some ways, they have to really depend on those two guys to get somewhere. I think that your point about Team USA with the size and the three-second rule is very valid. And in some ways, this is something that the other countries in the world – will get a, an advantage from if these guys are not available. Of course, they may have injury replacement players that they add in that have some sort of size. So we'll have to see. I mean, all we can do, G, is go through time and see how this all falls uh, falls out, how things happen. 
Yeah, I don't know. The USA team does look very big. When I look at that overall 13 group, it does look very big and very skilled and very Hall of Fame. But it, it, we know what? Sometimes that's, that's like I said, you can get too cocky and you fuck up. That's right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Chris is saying, and Team USA is unbeatable. He said this like three times already. Chris, man, are you trying to come on my stream every day just to fucking annoy me? Like, seriously. I would be surprised if they lose a quarter more than a handful of times. I also think Team Canada would could medal. But things have to go on a great run for the team. Chris, when it, seriously, if they lose their game, I'm going to be fucking all over you. And I'm going to be saying like, yeah, Chris, you're an idiot. Why did you think this? That they wouldn't lose a quarter? Seriously, bro. Seriously, man. I, I, I don't get you, man. I don't know what it is with you, man. Seriously. This is ridiculous takes. And if you're just like some sort of counter agent or some sort of weird Penn Sarahite that's in here just fucking around with me for like year a year now, I don't understand you, bro. This is ridiculous, your take. Why can't you see the history I just panned out for you? It doesn't matter who's on Team USA. If they're not together and they don't understand how to play together, they're going to lose. It doesn't matter how good they are. Seriously. Seriously. I'm, I also think Team Canada could medal, but things have to go on a great run for the team. Of course, that's the that's anybody in the Olympics. It's whoever has the best run. And last summer it was Germany, and Germany kicked some butt. I mean, don't count out Dennis in Germany. Don't count out uh, uh, a lot of the good teams from Europe. You know, there's a lot of good teams in FIBA right now. And just thinking the U.S. is going to not lose a single quarter, you're crazy, bro. You are absolutely batshit crazy. Is what I'm gonna say. Uh, let's see. Uh, Smooth saying, uh, well, Golden State lost last night. Likely Clay's last game as a Warrior. And the end of that team as we know it. I think you're right too, but Zach Lowe does not think that. And he's putting out propaganda this morning to try and save it. He's so scared. Oh, they can't break the Warriors up. I'm going to write a piece for how they can stay together. Even if it doesn't make any fucking sense for their future. And if you do this, you hold on for too long. Well, it could really fuck up their future even more because they held on to the old era too long. So you go ahead, do whatever you're going to do, Warriors. You want to keep your, your dynastic core together? That may be the really stupid move. You may want to just let them go this summer because it may be time to start fresh, just like the Raptors just did. Because seriously, I mean, y'all going to have to do this eventually. If you hold on and it drags you along, yeah, it's going to be even worse down the road because you're going to be all bruised up and cut up from the asphalt, from dragging, getting dragged down the road, trying to hold on to something that's just not supposed to be around anymore. And I think this moves right. I think that in some ways this summer is going to be a big change for the Golden State Warriors franchise. I think that it could be Draymond going to the Lakers or some bullshit like that. You know, I think that if you lose any of those three guys, that is signifying that that dynasty is over. If Steph Curry leaves, if Clay, Clay Thompson leaves, if uh, Draymond Green leaves, that dynasty is over because those three guys symbolize it. And if there's just two of them there, it don't matter. That shit is over. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cream saying hearing Reggie Miller glazing when LeBron took a charge against Zion yesterday is fucking annoying. The fact uh, we are glorifying lazy defense and drawing fouls when a man is in midair is disgusting. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. The NBA is going to protect the NBA. I was putting down Draymond yesterday and Ross was defending him. I said this to Ross. I said, Draymond Green is the only player in the NBA that gets to play by 90s rules. And he's like, well, Ra Raptor Street, hang on. Uh, Draymond Green has a long history of playing in this league with a certain intensity on defense. He's known as a genius, and this is why he gets a special privilege to do this. And in some ways, I didn't say this to Ross, but I was like, hear what you're saying, bro. It doesn't change anything of what I just said. Just because you think, and a lot of the NBA mainstream and uh, the, the hierarchy think that Draymond has a card to just do whatever the fuck he wants on the court, violence and whatever, because he's just known for his reputation. You make that shit up. And that's exactly what Reggie Miller was doing, Kareem, on the broadcast, is uh, purporting the legend of LeBron further for the uh, NBA purposes for marketing. And, I mean, Ross is telling me all the genius of, of Draymond Green, uh, you know, he's going to protect it too from the outside, even as not a player who's actively playing at this point. So very, very interesting. And, yeah, I totally agree with your comment completely. Uh, Kareem saying, remove charges and contest already, you lazy bitch. <laughs> There you go. Bryce is here. Good morning, Lex and Raptor Freaks. Good morning to you, Bryce Lawson. In Kentucky, the heartland of basketball. That's right. Uh, Chris is saying, uh, at G, it's possible AD and MB get hurt, but also possible SGA gets hurt. See, like, why are you fucking saying shit like this, Chris? Are you trying to get me to kick you off the channel? Because seriously, why do you want to say that? First of all, they're not similar type players. 
Like those guys are injury prone. I don't know if SGA is. And you just fucking putting that out there in the ether. Fuck you, Chris. You're getting my two fingers salute. Like, what do you want? Are you Canadian? Seriously, are you American guy living in Canada as some sort of weird operative or some shit? What the fuck is your deal, bro? Why would you even put that out there for that idea or just speak, have me speak it? Seriously, what do you fucking want? Seriously, you want Canada to fail? Are you on our side or not? You sound like you're fucking glazing the Team USA just like Reggie Miller's glazing LeBron. Seriously, bro. Uh, like a possibility, but injury speculation only gets you so much. I hope Canada just gets a medal. It would be massive. Yeah, of course it would be massive. What the fuck? Seriously, bro. Listen, you're really off base today and like pissing me off. Uh, yeah, you're distracted. Well, why don't you just not watch the stream today? Why don't you go just do whatever you're distracted with? Because honestly, I don't. Once again, you really pissed me off, Chris. Uh, G saying that's true. But historically, those guys are made of glass and FIBA is more to get much tougher than the NBA. I guess we'll see. Boom goes a dynamite. Once again, G, an intelligent person. Who's exactly right. Do you not understand the difference in health outcomes between Shea, Gilgis Alexander, and Joel Embiid and Anthony Davis? I don't think you do. I, seriously, man. I don't even think you use your brain. I'm going to give G uh, a, a two, a three-pointer just for just speaking the truth. 37. It's like you're talking about a whole different kind of injury history in these players that you're saying this. And God forbid you put that on your tongue about SGA, fucker. Is what I'm going to say right there, right now. I'm sorry. Uh, Chris, I want to like you, but I don't. Seriously, don't. Because you really pissed me off. Seriously. Uh, Smooth saying. And he, they don't even have to get hurt in FIBA. They could get hurt in the playoffs, and they can't play in uh, FIBA going into it, like, way before. I think that's exactly what's going to happen with Embiid, is that he he's going to try and play. He'll get hurt. He'll get hurt even further, and they won't go that far in the playoffs, the Sixers. And it'll fuck up his Team USA stuff, too. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Smooth saying the world is caught up to the U.S. It's no guarantee that gold will be given to them. Exactly. Smooth's exactly right. It will be a dogfight. Canada, Spain, and Serbia and all others all bring in their very best. Australia, you could throw them into the mix of a contender. There's a lot of teams that can contend. There's like eight teams that could win the gold medal. There seriously is. And some of it will have to do with group seating and catching some luck with health. And also just having a fire and playing with your team the correct way. I'm telling you, team system will beat individual superstars that are not a team any day at this point in the NBA. And Smooth's exactly right. The world is caught up to the U.S. They're talking about for the All-Star game doing world versus U.S. And they could have a very competitive game. In the past, people would say, why would they have a world versus the U.S.? The U.S. is just going to kick the world's ass. That's bullshit at this point. Look at all the good international players at the top of the league right now. The, the MVP candidates, a lot of them are international players. Luca, Giannis, Nikola, SGA. So, yeah, man, man, this is crazy. I feel like he's just some sort of information uh, person who's trying to, like, sway things for the U.S. in this way or this. I don't know what the fuck's going on with Chris. Uh, Fiercely saying, good morning, fam, and happy Wednesday. Laugh out loud at uh, Nako, Shanghai not wanting clay. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Chris, I disagree. Team Canada can definitely beat Team USA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get Jamal Murray added. We're going to get a little bit more size this summer. Maybe O'Shea Bursette, maybe a different guy. Yeah, we're going to uptool our team a bit too. It's not going to be the same as what USA is doing, but in some ways, maybe just a little bit's better than like going crazy like what they're doing. You know, we want to keep most of the core from last year coming back for this. And man, Dylan Brooks is like, bring it, bring it. It's like, drop and give me 50 motherfucking bitches. That's what he's saying to Team USA right now. That's a badass, just like Drake is with his diss track. He's got he's a Drake. Drake is Dylan. Dylan is Drake right now. And it's funny, too, because LeBron tweeted a thing. And you guys were right. He's friends with Drake. But I don't ever see like them interacting too much. But he put a little owl with fire on a tweet this weekend saying that he loves the diss track that Drake just put out and how he went after everybody. LeBron James. And now Dylan's saying, well, I'm I'm uh, Drake. And Team USA is the everybody that Drake was singing about in the drop and give me 50. Amazing stuff, Dylan Brooks. You are a badass. And I love that you're a Canadian and you play for Team Canada. Bill and Dylan is my dude. And he was awesome. He was awesome with what he did yesterday. So good. So, so good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she disagrees. Team Canada can beat USA. Uh, uh, Chris is saying, I hope Team USA falls apart somehow, but they have so much scoring. Who cares? There's only one ball. This is what Nick used to always say when they, people would talk about super teams we'd have to go up against. You, you could have everybody on the team, but there's only one ball still at the end of the day. 
That's it. There's only one ball. And in some ways, you know, those kind of teams with so many scores, that's more a clouded picture. In some ways, these guys could be like, oh, I thought you would do it. No, I thought you would do it. You were supposed to catch the baby. Ah, you could have caught it. Nobody does it. And they're lazy. That's the other problem. These are older players that play lazy. And they're going to come out there and play their lazy ass style and not connect it. They're going to lose. I'm going to tell you that right now, Chris. And we're going to see by the end of the summer. And like, seriously, bro. <laughs> seriously, bro. You may look real bad with your takes from today. Seriously, down the road. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think Team Canada can do well, and that's going to get us a medal, I hope. I, I, a medal is a great success for Team Canada, and I hope for it also. In some ways, a gold, would I'd be ecstatic. But you know what? Getting a bronze or a silver like last year would be fantastic also. In some ways, I just want to look good and get far and, and, and build on top of what we did last summer for FIBA. Yeah, Smooth saying it should be noted that most teams, with the exception of Germany, has had their, their B squats. This, this time, it's all A's. That's true. That's true. I don't think Germany, like they could have gotten uh, what you call it, idiot that didn't show up, Max Kleber. But uh, yeah, I, this is true. Smooth's right. There's a lot of teams that are going to bring in like reinforcements for this summer, just like the U.S. Uh, Nako saying Darko's a pretty positive thinker. Yes. And one of the things we found out this week is that he talks a lot to the players. They all love him. RJ says he's one of his friends now. Uh, they're not always talking basketball. They talk about whatever. And these players feel like they can talk to Darko at any time and just ask him general life questions. That's fantastic. In fact, it really sounded like RJ was saying in his interview this week that Darko helped him like uh, uh, mourn his brother. You know, it could very well be that Darko used a lot of the, the ties with his friend that died, the assistant coach of the Warriors this season, and uh, gr the grief and this grieving process. In some ways, if Darko was helpful to RJ, to heal and feel better about things. That's an amazing coach that goes way beyond any like criticisms and things that people would say, Oh, he's a shitty coach. Oh, he, he should never been a head coach. All that bullshit. Are you listening to me? This motherfucker helped RJ Barrett heal his heart when his younger brother died tragically this season. So, I mean, I Darko's amazing. He's amazing. He's the best coach uh, we could have right now. And I really on a, I will put my reputation on that shit right there. Tom Duke has got a uh, number one Canada. Let's go NBA playoffs. Look scripted. Un uh, look unscripted almost unscripted. You mean not script? You mean scripted? You mean scripted? I think you didn't mean the unscripted. You mean scripted? It looks scripted because it's unscripted. That means it's natural and it's way the way it's supposed to be. Uh, Wayne's saying, "I'm glad to see that punk ass team Pelicans gone. They're not though. They have another game on uh, Friday against." Uh, the Kings. And if they win that one, they will play against the Thunder in the first round. So the New Orleans Pelicans, they have a chance to still be the eighth seed. They were in the top part of the playing bracket. And that's how it works. Lakers get the automatic bid to go in against the Nuggets. Well, the, the Oil New Orleans Pelicans are not totally out. They get to play on Friday against the Sacramento Kings, who won last night also. And the winner of that one will play SGA in the Oklahoma City Thunder in the first round. So, yeah, they're not out. Way to go, LeBron. Lakers next to go. News out is that Bruce Brown had a knee injury, which affected his play. Yeah, there's an interview with Lindsey Dunn with Bruce Brown, and he's saying that in some ways he's sad because he didn't get to show how good he is to Raptors fans and the Raptors organization at the end of the season because on the down low, he had a bad knee injury that was really hindering him in certain ways. I mean, we could kind of see it and kind of the way he was scooting around. In some ways, yeah, I could see that. And there were even games where he sat out and knee was the reason. So that's too bad. In some ways, I don't know. And so, whatever they do with Bruce, I, I trust Masai, just like Darko does. Darko said that a lot in his press conference yesterday. He said they're asking him about what do you want for your draft needs? And uh, Grange asked him that. And he's like, well, uh, I know we need some things, but in some ways, I just want to let Bobby and Masai do their job. And I trust in them. You know, so there you go. There you go. They're trusting him. He's trusting Masai. We trust in Masai. Let's trust in Masai. That's right. Let's trust in Masai. Yeah, uh, Fiercey saying somebody wrote CP3 finally figured out how to beat the Warriors. That is hilarious. Whoever wrote that, you know, you're the messenger, so I'm going to give you the dunk. <laughs> that is hilarious. 93, Fiercey. That is really funny. <laughs> CP3 found, finally figured out a way to beat the Warriors. That's hilarious. Uh, Tom Duke saying, do you think uh, Big Zion's knee is busted again? It didn't look good. I didn't watch the game. I didn't watch any highlights or anything. I just heard. All right, all right, this is what I heard. I heard that he got hurt, but he was able to finish the game. And then I also heard when he was leaving the arena, he's walking fine. So I think he's going to be fine, Tom, because when he walked out of the arena, he, he, he didn't have a limp or anything. Just so you know, uh, Tom's saying just too much mass on that frame of his. 
Well, from what I just said, reports are saying people saw him leaving and he was not having any kind of limp and he looked like he could walk fine. So we'll have to see. This is a quick turnaround and it's an important game on Friday against the Kings to stay in the playoffs. That's right. Uh, Chris is saying the Pels aren't gone yet. Yeah, that's what I just said. I think Zion is toast, though. Well, they said he walked out all fine after the game last night out of the arena. And Alvarado is crippled. Okay, I didn't see that. Uh, he's too massive and thick for b-ball. Yeah, I don't, I don't totally agree with all that. He has had injury uh, problems, but I think that if he just would cut down his body fat uh, percentage, he'd be fine. It really is his off-season workout. He can't be off-season workout with, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the, the porn star on Twitter. That's not working out, the thumbs, and trying to go back and forth and say, I'm not going to give you that money. You know, whatever you're doing, Zion, in the off-season, you need to do it the other way. And she tried to say stuff in the tweet last year that there's all kinds of fast food box dirt, dirty garbage in his apartment that he's just eating garbage all the time and just leaving it all over the place like a like a pig. So I don't know. He could change some off season habits and he could change really quick. I mean, at a certain point in Lowry's young career, he decided to shed the body fat and things got better. So don't count Zion out for this. In fact, in some ways, I have more respect for Zion now that I've seen him play more recently since he's not been hurt and uh, i think that you guys may be shocked to see zion slim down a little bit and become more healthy in the future guys because honestly millions of dollars will make people do life-changing shit let's just put it that way yeah uh let's see tom saying i like alvarado getting in d'angelo's face yeah and you agree with chris uh fiercely saying lex what are your takeaways from the postseason presser well i'm gonna do this tomorrow i want to see my size and I'll talk about each one of them tomorrow. I watched them all yesterday a couple times, the ones that were on, Darko and the players. I have a gripe. Because we were live on Monday and when Scotty went on live, they've edited the hell out of the exit interviews when the Toronto Raptors official account when they released them to YouTube. How the fuck is Scotty's interview only seven minutes? I know it was like a half an hour. And they cut a whole bunch of different things out of there. And in some ways, we got to catch them live to catch everything that was said. I'm wondering if the, the Toronto Raptors are really trying to shape the what people see and from the exit interviews. Uh, because if you don't see the raw footage of the live, you're going to miss a bunch of stuff. Because last year they put the whole thing out unedited, but now they've chopped them up and they're leaving questions and parts of the interviews out. So there is stuff that was asked on Media Day that I do not have access to see and it's pissing me off. Next time, we're definitely going to be watching it live. In fact, I should probably start watching Masai in about 10 minutes. Because if they're going to edit those interviews so that we can't see everything that was said, well, I want to see everything. And I know there's a bulk of Scotty's interview, RJ's interview, Jakob. I haven't even seen his interview. They haven't even posted it. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of pissed off about this. These, these short little edited clips, Toronto Raptors official and men, give us the raw footage. Give us the whole entire time they sit in the podium and every question. Are you letting Scott edit his own interview? And there's some part that he didn't like or he's embarrassed because I know this is something he doesn't like. It's talking to y'all. Maybe they were saying, Scotty, we love you so much. You're our franchise player. We're going to let you edit your end of season interview and we'll only put in the stuff that you want. All right. I like that. And then they're like, he, Scotty may have edited himself. He said, yeah, this is good. This makes me look good. No, I don't like this. There's no way that uh, some of these interviews were only four minutes and your little ass like uh, peddly shit that you released. Toronto Raptors official admin. I like the raw footage. And if it's going to be like this, I'm going to watch it live if you're going to not give it to us. So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about it on Thursday after Masai's done. Uh, Darko's saying that they will work their schedule around RJ and Kelly's and their respective coaches. I like it. Yeah, they got to do this. Team Canada is a priority. And uh, it's a really good thing, honestly. In some ways, a lot of ways, it's good for Team Canada and good for the Raptors. Uh, Chris is saying, I just like Alvarado. He's on my all time team runt NBA. Uh, team fun player well, if you like him why are you insulting him why are you insulting him calling him team run i mean seriously that doesn't make any sense grand theft alvarado is awesome he's a great player and you know what he's an nba player jfl is not uh jordan's saying i was very impressed with scotty when darko said he wants to be defensive player of the year yeah scotty is really impressive there's all kinds of things that i, I even more learning recently that are awesome like it's really cool kind of how he i hate that he got injured but how he sat on the bench and that perspective of seeing the game from sitting on the bench, it changed him in some way. Seriously, that's what he's saying. And this is the thing. We don't know what Scotty's going to be like returning to the court actively playing with this new perspective of sitting on the bench next to Garrett through a whole entire game 
and listening to Garrett Temple point out every little thing that he wants to show him in the game to make him even smarter and wiser about the NBA and this and the way NBA games are. It's a really good thing. In some ways, sometimes you're so active and you're, you, you just continually play. If you don't take a break and kind of let yourself mentally catch up, because you're physically putting out so much energy the whole year. In some ways, this injury is a godsend because it could be next year. Scotty comes back a more cerebral player uh, in a different way than he's done already. In some ways, there's a whole level of Scott. If he really reads the floor, as he puts it, he sees the game differently than a lot of people. Uh, he could be the kind of guy that makes some sort of leap just because he got injured this year. Seriously. Because he did mental schooling. He did like thinking about the game from the outside. In some ways, he said this, and this is important. It really bugged me that I couldn't be healthy to be out there to help my team try to win. That like got more like him more. It's not like he sees these guys out there and he thinks they're trash. They're losing and they're ass. And he's like, oh, I hate this team. I don't want to be here. Why am I on this loser team? No, he sees these guys. He's encouraging them. He's coaching them. He's telling them, like helping them. And specifically, he's mentoring Grady, apparently. Uh, he is like, I'm invested. I want to help this organization. He said that specifically. In some ways, that is music to our ears because the goals of Scott are not only his own individual goals. He has goals for the Toronto Raptors organization, and he is a company man, and he cares about it. You know, a lot of these top guys with the, you know, things and stuff like that, they don't always say this kind of shit. They're like, they'll say, yeah, we're going to have a good season and stuff like that. But with him professing straight up, I am trying to do what's best for this organization in the future. This is awesome. This is a really, really good thing that he said right there. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. Jordan, good to see you this morning. Uh, Smooth saying Nets aren't a contending team. That's There's that. The situation is bleak. Well, in some ways, he may want to hit the ground running and really try and figure this out so he can look good for next year. I worry about this, and I know Jordy's going to be a little stressed out, and he is not going to get any rest this whole entire offseason. As soon as he's done with the Kings, if they hire him with the Nets, Boom, he's off and running and doing net stuff right up until he has to report for Team Canada. And then, boom, he's off and running and doing Team Canada Olympics. And then, boom, when he's done with that, he's right on back on to the Brooklyn Net stuff to get ready for the next season. So it's going to be crazy. He's putting a lot on his plate. Let's just put it that way. Not going to say Zion can ball, but he's a wild card. King's going to win. They are more complete. I have no idea who will win that game. In some ways, uh, you know, it's weird because the Pelicans were kind of out of the game against the Lakers last night, but they came back and scared the shit out of them. I don't know. There's a lot of weapons on that team. And some of those weapons were not working properly last night. Let's just put it that way, like your guy Herb Jones and some of those other guys on there. Yeah, the length of the Pelicans and the depth of the Pelicans is better than the Kings. So don't be surprised if you're wrong. And the Pelicans are going on to play the Thunder in the first round. Uh, let's see, Kareem saying, and he will, they will have the home court. That's the other thing. This game will be in New Orleans. This game will be in New Orleans, just like the one last night. Uh, let's see, uh, Kareem saying, Darko really impressed me with that presser. He's not phased about the season. He was laying down the blueprint and slowly building from the bottom. For a coach to go through this is a grueling. Patience is key. Yeah, this guy, he may be a one-year NBA head coach, but honestly, give him like three years credit because he got every kind of thing you can deal with as an NBA coach in this season, like it's crazy. Like uh, uh, Jakob said that in his, uh, his interviews, like this is the most craziest year I've ever had in the NBA this year. And he was on some bad Spurs teams recently, you know? So I, it's, it's a very interesting thing in some ways. It, Darko's yeah. One year NBA head coach, but honestly give him like a three year head coach because of just how jam packed full of controversy and crazy shit. This has been, we found out more about idiot John Tay that there is linkages to him gambling on sports a couple of years ago on FanDuel. He did not gamble on any of the basketball, and this is bad. Ross said this about Jonte. Holy crap. This is very interesting. He said, this is what Terrence Ross said, and this is verbatim what Terrence Ross said. Jonte is going to jail. That is what Terrence said as a former player in the NBA. He said, yeah, if he did this shit, they're going to put him in jail. He's not just going to get banned from the NBA. They're going to figure out a way to put him in jail. And, uh, and Ross also said this about Jonte. Jonte fumbled everything. He fumbled his bag that he was just about to get in the NBA. He fumbled his NBA career. And he said it's so sad and pathetic. Seriously. And in some ways, him as a former player who used to play in the NBA, he's so disappointed and angry at him because he's fucking with the integrity of the game by doing shit like this. So if somebody who's not even playing anymore, 
somebody who's not involved in the NBA. Just think how the people in the NBA field, Adam Silverfield, if retired, Terrence Ross on Twitch is saying, yeah, Jonte, I'm really mad at him for like doing this to our sport. Crazy. Like if, if Terrence Ross thinks Jonte is going to jail, he probably is. I don't know. Maybe Ross doesn't have a realistic view on this, but. Yeah, very interesting stuff there. Very, very interesting. A smooth, a smooth saying, uh, the net situation is much worse than the Raptors. They really stink. I will agree with this completely. Jordy's got a lot of work to do there. A lot of work. Uh, Nako saying, Pusha T still owns Drake. What are you talking about, Nako? Come on now. You got to stand up for our global ambassador. That's right. Uh, and Amit saying, yo, it's 35 degrees here today, so I'm going to go hang out with my family while I'm on my Passover break. Just wanted to pop in and say what's up. Good to see you, Amit, and I hope you're safe and healthy. Yeah, no comment on where you are and what's going on there. I don't want to get into that today, but Amit, I just want you to be safe. And that's If anything, if there's a, somebody in that country that you live in that I want to be safe, I want it to be Amit Gaming. Seriously, seriously. is That, a, that is the person I want to be safe because, man, that's crazy. Like, y'all were getting bombed, but the U.S. stopped the missiles. And that, oh my gosh. And man, if this thing escalates to Iran, this is going to be really bad. This is literally, gonna, it could be World War III very quickly. Your leader of your country needs to stop before he starts WW3 because it's coming. He needs to stop all this crazy Holocaust shit he's doing right now. Seriously. And I said that word. That's what he's doing. He is committing his own Holocaust and genocide on the people of Palestine right now. Uh, Chris is saying, Lex, of course, Jordy is going to coach an Olympic team. It's once it's a once in a lifetime gig. There's no conspiracy. Nothing is fucked here. It's 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 iry. Uh, all good. C chill, baby. Hang 10, bro. <laughs> all right. Whatever. In some ways, I think you're trolling. Uh, listen, I, I think you're right, but it's only because he committed. Now, is Joe Sy going to come to him and say, I really wish you weren't doing this because we're in trouble with the Nets. We stink. We're worse than the Raptors and we need help. And in some ways, we need your full attention this summer to really start our guys and orient them in the right direction for the season. I mean, that's kind of what happened when Nick went to the Sixers is I'll bet Daryl Morey kind of talked to him and said, yeah, we don't really want you to do Team Canada this summer. We need you to just focus on the Sixers. This is your job, man. And that's just a gig. Plus, you're not in Toronto anymore. Why would you want to help them? You know, I don't know. In some ways, I worry about this. If there's three different ways this can go where it's perfect, everything's fine, he can do everything, and we do really successful this summer, where it's like he is distracted and we suffer for it on our team, but he still still show up. And then there's the whole fucked up thing where all of a sudden he steps down in the months before the Olympics, and we have to scramble and find somebody new and get the program set up just in time. You won't tell me that this isn't conspiratorial? Because in some ways, Team Canada is a big pop, pop power coming up in the basketball world and internationally. And it is kind of scary because we do have a very good group of young players coming up that in some ways, if they want to try and stymie or hold us back a little bit, we'll switch our coach out twice in two years with two huge major tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not good for uh, Team Canada basketball. And Rowan Martin is pissed. Yeah. I mean, Rowan Barrett is pissed. Rowan Barrett Sr. is pissed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, it is going to be what it's going to be. I'm going to hope for the best and project for the best, a, a Canada medal and Jordy fine. But we got to talk about this because it's an issue. This is a report this week, and this is something we need to talk about. What will be the effect if Jordy Fernandez becomes the next coach of the Brooklyn Nets for Team Canada senior men's team? Because this is important to talk about right there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Fiercey saying hi to Ahmed. Ahmed saying, what's up, Fiercey? And uh, he, she's got a thousand point lead on you now in the trivia. She's really running away with it now. She really killed it yesterday. Oh, my gosh. A lot of y'all got major points yesterday. There was a major shakeup in the Raptor Freak trivia standings yesterday. So go check it out. Uh, Isaac Campbell finally passing Iceman like Gervin. Thank you. That guy is a Darko hater. And I'm glad you're beating his ass. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Zion, uh, Smooth saying, I don't trust that Zion injures, injury. I really feel like it was rigged. That's how I feel. You think it's some sort of weird thing to help the Lakers win that one game? I don't know. Like I said, Zion walked out on his own. He had no problem walking out of the arena. Seriously. Uh, Chris is saying, oh, no, laugh out loud. My unbeatable US Team USA take is not going to be popular here in about 30 minutes. Laugh out loud. I, don't, I really don't mean to be so controversial. It just happens like every morning. Ha ha. I don't know. You know what the room is here. You just don't read it very well. I think that that's what it is. Uh, Trevor's saying, we have no other choice, but just give it to Coach Darko to coach Team Canada. No, that's a bad idea. We do not want to do that. 
There's a couple of reasons why we don't want to do that. We learned our lesson with Nick. Now, it's a different situation. I trust Darko more. I think he's more loyal. But in some ways, we don't want to double duty him like that. I think that they should never, ever, ever make Team Canada's coach the same coach as Toronto Raptors ever again. Ever again. We learned a valuable lesson about Nick Nurse, and we cannot do this, Trevor. That's putting too many chicken eggs in one basket. We need to put them in different ones. It's just not a good idea. Plus, Darko has aspirations to be the coach of Serbia down the road. It's very evident. He talked about it in interviews last summer when we were around the FIBA World Cup that it, there's a hierarchy of great Serbian coaches, and he's on that escalator list to possibly become the coach of Serbia, his home country. So he's not going to take the Team Canada job because he wants to be coach of Serbia down the road, just so you know. Uh, Infamous is saying, salute, freaks. Golden State being eliminated, no excuse for Wiggins for not joining Team Canada. Yeah, there is. That he's not invited, and he will not be on the team. <laughs> That's the excuse right there. I don't think he will be on the team. If he shows up and he says he wants to be on the team, well, in some ways, that may be up to Rowan Barrett and not Andrew Wiggins. Seriously. Uh, in some ways, Andrew Wiggins is a little bit washed in the last two years. And I don't know if he's an upgrade or an, a good addition at this point to bump somebody off from last year and put him in. Sure, there's no excuse. He could do it because he's out already. But it doesn't matter if they don't want him. That's what I will say to that. Uh, Fiercely saying, your niece and nephew are into unboxing? So cute. My daughter went through that phase as well. She's interesting. Like she wants to make content like me. Like she did a whole uh, little cooking show that she did with my mom. And it was fun. She, my mom was like her helper. And she was like showing how to make something in the kitchen and like doing the ingredients and filming herself and stuff. You know, there's another time when I came down there for Christmas and she she knows that I study clown. Like I, I'm a trained clown. Like I can get on stage and do clown performance that's not like going and dressing up and going to kids party i mean like pantomime i mean like uh you know somebody does a monologue on stage or an actor i'm trained uh, as on a, as a theater clown and well i taught her some clowning one christmas and we put on our own little clown show for the whole family and it was awesome we filmed it and she was so funny she was a natural clown just like me and it was it was hilarious it's those kind of moments that you have forever is i miss them and it's it's awesome to have that uh, Tom saying shout out to your niece and nephew for the classic cards. Yeah, those were recent cards. Trevor gave me the classic cards. They got the current cards, the ones that we just opened. Yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, good cards. You got all kinds of cards. Look at that. The red card and the credit card. Ahmed saying I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of U.S. games, if the game is close, the ending lineup will be Holiday, Halliburton, and Edwards, Kawhi, and Bam, because all those guys work hard on both ends of the floor. You know what? I'm going to give you a three-pointer, Ahmed, because I feel like this is really good insight. This is a young kid. This is Ahmed, the teenager in high school. And he understands this. This is really good basketball theory. I think you're exactly right. Those guys are dogs. Those guys are workers. And I love that you put Kawhi in there as the only old guy on there. And the center, of course, is Bam. Yeah, I'm going to give you a three-pointer, Ahmed. That's pretty awesome. A comment, and I think you're exactly on point. You know what, Ahmed? You don't even have any dunks uh, right now. Because uh, honestly, you haven't been active in the live that much. I'm going to give you a dunk. I'm going to give you a three-pointer. Like I said, you're getting a three uh, so, Amit, you're getting added to the spreadsheet. I'm glad to see you back, my guy, even if it's just for a little bit. And I want you to be safe. And, you know, nice warm day. That's great. Uh, cool Cat saying, good morning, Rapid Free Crew. Playoffs are very competitive in both the East and the West. Fun times. Completely agree. In some ways, Trevor's saying this is going to be one of the best playoffs ever. I'm going to say, yeah, you guys are probably right. It's going to be the, the, the parity in the league is so much better now. It's way better when it seems like 10 different teams could win the championship. Instead of it's just like this juggernaut is dominant all year and it's pretty much penciled them in. Now, some would argue, well, maybe that's the Celtics, but I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. So I agree with you, Cool Cat. And uh, last night was a good start with the first two playing games. We'll get two more tonight. Uh, Cowboys saying, good morning, Lex. Damn, bam, bam, bam. There's, ta-da, it's Bradley and the Raptor Freak. Sorry, been really busy. It's all good, man. Listen, don't ever feel bad about not being here all the time, Bradley. We love you. And the door is always open. And when you could be here, I know you're here when you can. So it's all good. Everyone have a great, safe day. Let's go Raptors all day, every day. Two fingers salute the Lakers. Good job, Kings. That's right. Tada Services. This is where Bradley is. He's so busy. He's with Tada Cleaning Services, 647-833-6844. They can help you with all kinds of odd job, any kind of stuff around your house. Bradley himself will come to your house if you call this number, 647-833-6844. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, Messiah is starting to talk right now. Cool cat. He is supposed to be talking right this second. 
That's why I should get going. I'm not saying I don't know why, but my Terrence Ross Twitch noties don't go off. Like the notifications are on, but they just don't pop for me. I don't think he puts them off. I think he doesn't want to get a whole, whole lot of people in there. The way I find him is through t Twitter. He posted on there. Hey, I'm alive. And then I see it and I'll click the link there. I don't get it from noties. I get it from him posting on there that I'm, I'm live on Twitter on Twitter, live on Twitch on Twitter. That's the where I see it there. So uh, Amit's also saying, I still find it hilarious that trading for Damian Lillard made the Celtics better. Yeah, really stupid. Uh, I was talking to Ross yesterday about how Milwaukee's front office just screwed up all over the place. And he agreed with me. I said, uh, Milwaukee's fumbled the ball all year long. And and uh, and Terrence said, Raptor Street, you think Milwaukee fumbled the ball this year? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. He, so he agrees with me on that one. He said, yeah, they did. They, I think it started when they fire, uh, fire, overreacted and fired Coach Bud. And then making the Lillard trade, just one stupid mistake after another. Firing Griff, doing Griff wrong. Yeah, just one stupid mistake after another. Milwaukee's front office is really bad. And thank God we got Masai. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Smooth saying, I have a strong feeling that the new president of MLSC has mandated the front office to get back to respectability as soon as next year. No prolonged rebuild allowed. Pressure is on. I don't know if this is totally true. Keith Pelly, he's going to be wanting excellence and good things to happen in progress. But, you know, we're in a rebuild and he can't just say, get get it faster, get it faster. And some ways it's got to naturally happen the, at the speed and pace and the way it's supposed to. So I think that he's savvy enough to understand this, Pelly. And he, I mean, he might be more patient than you think. Let's just put it that way. Tom Duke saying, I'm at definitely Damon Scoot couldn't been something could have been something egos. What are you talking about? Uh, you oh, you're talking about oh, because you're a Portland fan uh, on the other side. You're saying that if Dame had stayed with Scoot, that it could have worked, and it's the ego of Dame that got him in trouble. I won't disagree with that, Tom. In some ways, he wanted out there so bad. In some ways, he listened to all the bullshit noise about chip chasing, and it really screwed him up. It really, really screwed him up. Uh, I'm just saying, I met Leonard Miller at Global Jam last year. He's a nice dude. Also, I watched him play in the first Global Jam. He was okay this year. Disappointing compared to the year before, but he was also dealing with injuries, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't think he was that bad this year. When I saw him, when we played Minnesota near the end of the season, he got to play and he was awesome. They blew us out and he was a part of the backup unit that came in the garbage time. And he just kept the, the, the quality of what the Timberwolves were doing up. He came in and he was the one killing us in the last five minutes of game in garbage time. The most capable, talented player in that Raptors Timberwolves game near the end of the season in Minnesota. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm just saying, uh, didn't he sign a two-year deal? Is, is it really his choice to come back unless they agree to buy out or they waive him? Who are you talking about? Are you talking about Leonard Miller? I don't know. You got to write in. Don't put he. Because even then, I'm like, I don't understand. Uh, so it is Leonard Miller, I'm sure. He's on a rookie contract, right? I don't know. Either way, you got to be more clear with me. You got to baby me, Amit. Uh, Dana's saying, good morning, everyone. Congrats to Jordy. Yeah, it's not official yet. I, unless it is and it just happened. It's not totally official. Uh, in some ways, it could still change, but it probably is going to happen. I'm at saying, then you guys have like Steven Silas, who is not called out enough for how bad he was a, a coach in Houston as a coach and developing. Who are you talking about? I don't know. You're talking about Steven Silas? Why? There's no point. There's no point in bringing him up. I think he's on the bench with Monty in Detroit at this point. Infamous is saying, uh, I heard there is some new info on Jonte Porter. Yeah, they have him officially dead to rights for sports gambling, but it wasn't basketball related, college or NBA. And it was a couple of years ago, and there was a lot of money that he was gambling at that point. So it's a huge amount of money, and it's on FanDuel, and they have him dead to rights for being a gambler from before. Now, I don't know how that coincides with when he played in the NBA at different times. Uh, so, yeah, and he did not apparently did not have anything with basketball in, in, in general. I don't know. We'll see how it happens. There are new details coming out every once in a while. Uh, Ahmed saying last I heard about him was that he was betting while playing in the G, uh, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't betting against himself then. Yeah, we don't know. In some ways, we just let this all come out and then we'll decide about it. I know stunted growth. The YouTube channel is probably going to have Jonte Porter episode <laughs> as soon as we know more details exactly how this all falls out. When we have an ending to this, it will be very well known why and what happened. Trust me. We just got to wait for the investigation and the judgment to come out, and then we will know exactly the final fate with Jonte, whether he's innocent or guilty. 
So, yeah, it's crazy. Shaden Sharp, Kentucky legend. Yeah, the guy with hops, hops. All right, Basketball Rewind's in here, guys. Check out Basketball Rewind. Him and Coach Roach always having good roundtable discussions and fun stuff. He gets good guests, too. Often Samson, Samson Folk will uh, con uh, contribute to Kenyon's uh, content. Good to see you, Basketball Rewind. Let's see what he's saying. It's already been announced that it won't impact anything Olympics-wise. It's the dream of a life to get a medal as a coach, not just a World Cup thing, but an Olympic medal. Yeah, I, I honestly, the character of Jordy doesn't make me uh, worry that he won't fulfill his contract. I worry about pressure from a billionaire owner, Joe Sy, saying, uh, yeah, I really want you to do this. I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see how this shakes out. In some ways, uh, maybe we're a little sensitive because of what happened with Nick last summer uh, to this as far as switching our Team Canada coach before a big, huge event like the Olympics or World Cup. I know Jordy will come through and he probably like I'm very much not doubting he will. But I know that there is a percentage where uh, there's a reality that something weird and fucked up happens. And that's the only thing I'll say about that. I, I agree. That's a very prestigious thing to coach in the Olympics. And, I, you know, what? Jordy started something really awesome. And it's really a good feel around Team Canada and the fit with him in it. That it'd be a damn shame if it was like a one and done thing like that, just because he got his NBA head coach job all of a sudden. So this is really what the stream's about, Kenyon, today, is speculating and thinking about what the different possibilities of the outcomes with Jordy Fernandez and Team Canada's coach. We want him to just stay and keep doing it for as long as he can, honestly. And maybe he is just the coach for this cycle and they bring somebody else in. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. But I agree with you. He, he wants this opportunity. He's going he's gonna to show up. Uh, David's saying the Warriors look ready to go home after the first quarter. It's over for them. Yeah, it is over for them. They're done. It's not even like they get another game. That's one and done. That's a plan. They're done. Uh, Chris is saying the LSD Doc Ellis no hitter. Laugh out loud was in the seventies. What a weird one that story is. Yeah, Ross is infatuated with it. He thought it was really cool. In fact, he went on a whole tangent talking about psychedelics for a bit, and that's why I went straight up and asked him, "Well, well Terrence, have you done psychedelics?" And he said, "Well, Raptor Shriek, I I don't do anything that's synthetic or man made, but I'll do natural things like I'll smoke cannabis and I have taken mushrooms." Apparently, when Terrence took mushrooms, it was in a candy bar form, and he didn't exactly know exactly what it was. <laughs> and I said he was tripping. So in some ways, I was talking with Terrence Ross about the feeling of tripping yesterday and like how it feels to trip and like stuff like that. But he's never done LSD himself, but he has done mushrooms is what he said. And yeah, he was really fascinated with Doc Ellis. And to me, I was not familiar with Doc Ellis's story. So it was kind of cool to let her learn that story from Terrence Ross, kind of like telling the story to us on Twitch. This is cool, man. It was just fun. <laughs> in some ways, I was supposed to be watching the end of season interviews, but then Ross went live on Twitch, and I was like, I want to watch Ross for a little bit. And I'm so glad I did. Because seriously, I was on there with him for like three hours yesterday, and it was basically like him and I were just talking. It was so weird. It was really cool, though. As a Raptors freak and somebody who really loves the Raptors, getting to hang out and talk to our NBA slam dunk champion, Terrence Ross, former Raptor. Oh, man. We were talking about all kinds of stuff. We were talking about him playing with DeMar and Kyle. Uh, back in the day and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. It was awesome. All right, Fierce has got the cutoff. I love that you guys got Scott Skiles, and it was Amit. The youngster got it. Oh, so awesome that you got it, Amit. Um, all right, let me see. Uh, all right, definitely no more comments. I'm going to try and get out of here. Assist legend. Yeah, Scott Skiles got a, a, a 30 assist game in his career. I remember for the Magic, he had a 30 assist game. That's insane, y'all. Seriously, he, that was the record at that time. Uh, for the NBA, 30 assists. I don't know if anybody's beaten it or how, how much higher anybody's gotten, but 30 assists in a game by one guy. That was him, yeah. Only reason you know uh, him is because of the song that he sings, Because I Got High. Scott Skiles? Oh, okay. Uh, Chris Mullen was not right. Does Nashville have any major sports teams? They have the Nashville Predators, the NHL team. But uh, in some ways, that's the thing. If they're going to put a WNBA team in Tennessee. There's only going to be one. It's either going to be in Nashville or Memphis. Uh, Amit saying not Tennessee, the city of Nashville. Yeah, Predators, Nashville Predators for the, and also they have the Titans. I believe the Tennessee Titans are in Nashville also. So they've got a football team and a hockey team, I believe. Uh, Rewind saying Nashville has historical significance from a WNBA standpoint. And yes, Amit, they have the Nashville Predators. And I believe the Tennessee Titans are there also, just so you guys know. Um, yeah. Okay. That's cool. I did not know that about that, uh, basketball rewind that Memphis or Nashville has a historical significance from a WNBA standpoint. Maybe you go elaborate, please. Although I am going to run out of time soon. Uh, let's see smooth saying, yeah, let's do the cutoff in like a minute. 
Smooth Brown Man says, Clipper's only chance this year after this, it's over. I will agree with that. The window is closing quickly. Father Time is chasing down those Clippers from California, and they need to get it done now. Uh, Wayne saying, getting a vehicle, Lex. I have a seven miles per uh, gallon uh, sedan with your name on it. Really, Wayne? Well, you know, sedan would be nice, but I got, I'm getting a truck, and I'm getting a hybrid truck, apparently. I didn't even know this. I'm going to get a hybrid truck tomorrow. There's one available in my price range. And uh, that'll be awesome for the future. I'll be able to drive on electric a bit, which is fantastic. I'm so happy about this. It's something I didn't realize would be possible, and it's going to happen. So I need it for practical reasons. I need a truck for what I got to do. And a sedan is not the right car type for me as far as saying. I have a very specific thing that I need. And it looks like I'm going to get exactly what I want tomorrow, hopefully. We'll see. It's You always got to go into the dealership or the place you're getting it. And kind of figure it out. And sometimes things don't go exactly right. We'll have to see. Yeah, and see, Chris was right. He's saying the Nashville has the NFL too. The Titans. That's right. I'm just saying, uh, Bam out of bio, Drew Holiday and Jason Tatum just got their team USA jerseys. Okay, so it's official. So why did they even fucking make that list of all the people from Team USA Select and put Scotty's name on there? If they're just going to decide the team now, they're not even going to have everybody show up and do the practice. I mean, is Scotty going to go in and do this training camp with them? I hope he doesn't even waste his time. Seriously, Scotty, you know they're not gonna be. You're not gonna be on the Olympic team. Don't go to the team thing. I mean, if you want to, just for the experience and be around those players, maybe learn some things. Okay, but otherwise, like your hand is hurt. We saw it in the interview how swollen it is still. So obviously, I'm really glad that you didn't try and come back at the end of the season because your hand looked crazy in the interview the other day. Your hand looks absolutely crazy swollen still. So in some ways, if you're not healed up for that, well, I don't want you messing around with Team USA and practices. Uh, because you're not gonna be on the team for sure. Yeah, it's it's silly. It's silly. Uh Chris is saying my team USA take only gets worse from here. Laugh out loud. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> At least you're warning. All right, Chris, you're starting to make me laugh. So it's turned in a little bit. Uh Smooth saying Jokic going to suit up for Serbia, no matter what, man. I agree. I think this is for sure, and that is gonna change them. I mean, what did they get? They got what second? They got second. They lost to Germany in the finals, right? You're gonna add Jokic to that? Yeah, it's crazy. I'm just saying USA may dominate the Olympics, but they have just as good a chance to fail and not even medal. I think Amit's got the most fair and balanced. Uh, say, I'm not saying that the U.S. might not be totally dominant, but there's a lot of history that shows that they may not be also. So it'll be interesting. I think Amit's got the most fair and balanced uh, view on this. It's not either this way or that way. He's saying they could be this and they could be that. And I think he's exactly right because obviously he left everything open. <laughs> Chris is saying, I've watched a lot of international ball. I've thought it over. Team USA will win. All right, well, I'll disagree. I'm going to disagree on that. In some ways, maybe we should make a little personal wager. Nothing for money, just for bragging rights or something like that. You know, you can take USA over the field, and I'll take anyone else. You want to do that right now, Chris? You want to do that right now? Write it in at the end of the chat and say, I will take your bet, Lex. I will take USA. And you can have every single other team in the world. I'll, I'm so confident in USA that they're going to win. I will take them and you can have the field. And yeah, take that bet with me. I'll take that bet with you right now. Right now, I'll take that bet with you, Chris. If you're so thinking that's what it is, I'm just saying, is Victor Wembanyama playing for France or is Pop not letting him? I'll bet you he will play. They're done. They have time off and he, he probably will play. I'll bet you he will show up with Rudy Gobert and show up for Team France this year. Who knows? Maybe not. I don't know how much he's played with them uh, in their history. That may have something to do with it, too. France is a very uh, together team that's been together for a while. And some of those guys, maybe Wemby hasn't worked with them that much. Maybe it's time for him to come in. I think they'd be smart to have him to have him there. I think they would. Uh, I know he's played the lower levels. That's probably what it is. He's played the under teams. Maybe it's time for him to go to the senior team. That's right. Ahmed's saying LeBron and Bede and AD all complain about fouls in the NBA and are constantly f f falling. They are not ready for the Olympics because that style of basketball is less fouls and more aggression. The other thing is they may not find that they get the cushy ass whistle like they do in the NBA because they're nobody in FIBA. In some ways, what is he FIBA's officials are supposed to look at LeBron like LeBron is looked at in the NBA? I don't think so. So that may be that may be really interesting to see how the, <laughs> the whistle's different in FIBA than NBA for LeBron. Just on that right there. And I think that Amit's um, right. The physicality of the FIBA is a lot different. Uh, Fiercy said, I was wondering why the mask was on the tattoo. It looked like the Jason mask from Friday the 13th. Yeah, the little kid's wearing a Jason mask. The little kid who's staring at the totem thing over him. It's very, it's a weird tattoo. I could really go deep level meaning on it 
in all kinds of ways, but I kind of don't want to. I'm just going to take it at service level as this is some sort of uh, deity ordaining that the young man can shoot. And as blessed is the child that can hold his own is what it, it is said in there. So he's saying it's like if he's able to hold his own in the league, all right, let's go. I love that Darko's making fun of him still saying, yeah, he was 16 when he started. Now he's about 17 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Darko said about Grady. It's hilarious. I'm going to say, my mom says I can get a tattoo next year when I turn 16. What do y'all think about a Raptors logo in the middle of my forehead? You know what? That is not the best life choice, but I like your moxie as a Raptor freak. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> All right, let's see. Le Leaf Diggy is here. Holy crap. All right, he's saying, I'm a Nets fan. Jordy is Team Canada's coach. I thought he was the Kings development coach. Who is this guy? All right, Leaf, thanks for coming in and dropping a $5 super chat on me my guy and well because you paid well that's what uh, they do on youtube you make sure you answer the question correctly all right you want the scout on jordy guy because you want to know as a nets fan what to expect well this is a huge upgrade for you guys i know that you guys have toiled in the last few years well you had kevin ollie this year a great uh, old nba player who's, who's fantastic but in some ways he wasn't ready to be an nba coach this year I, I thought he had a good chance of changing from interim to head coach for you guys, but your 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 team has higher aspirations for something more. I thought Jack Vaughn was great after Steve Nash, and in some ways he didn't get his total due. I feel bad for Jacques Vaughn in some ways, and the same for Nash. The the, the situation was absolutely impossible with y'all's crazy ass big three that y'all had during that time with Steve Nash. So y'all have not had a capable coach in a while in some ways or a high level coach. Jordy is that. In some ways, I will say this, Nets fan. The short list for getting the next job here in Toronto was Darko and Jordy. Jordy would have been our other choice if we didn't cho choose Ryakovich. So Jordy is fantastic. He showed up last year after Nick Nurse sold us out and went to Philadelphia and quit Team Canada like three months before the FIBA World Cup. And he jumped into his spot and he got everything oriented in the right way. And he got us a bronze medal. Canada got third and we beat the U.S in the bronze medal game and they got fourth and we put medals around our shoulders. And I'm just saying a lot of that was Jordy and his continuity and coming in and doing a really good job of using SGA, RJ, Kelly, Lou Dort and the crew. So I would feel very optimistic about this hire as a Nets fan. I would be feeling really good. He's a great young guy who has a really good personality. I love his philosophy about how he feels like everybody on the court should be always moving. And if there's players standing around too much, he's looking at them and he's getting on their ass because he sees an efficiency in all five players being in motion at all times. That if you're not utilizing every single player on the court at every single moment, then you're missing something. So if that is something that makes you happy, Leaf Dingy, Diggy, sorry, Leaf Diggy, all respect, that this is this is the guy. He's good, Kai Chire. In some ways, I'm upset that y'all are taking him out of and uh, distracting him from Team Canada stuff. Yeah, there's a reason why Mike Brown and the Kings have done very well in the last couple of years, and he is the number one assistant under Mike Brown with the Sacramento Kings. So it's a great, great hire. Uh, you guys are really going to be happy with him. Trust me. You guys may not see the results right away. Once again, your team, our team, the Pistons, they need to not go after the coaches because these are good coaches. They know what they're doing. And in some ways, you could throw the baby out before the good stuff happens because you're not patient enough to get through the shitty stuff. So it's like I tell Raptors fans right now, Dwayne Casey's birthday is today. Dwayne Casey, the first year he coached the Toronto Raptors, he only won 23 games. Well, Dwayne Casey ramped us up over the course of the 2010s, and boom, he built us up through the Lebronto years to get to the one year that Nick Nurse came in and won the championship in 2019. So the groundwork has to be laid at some point, and the steps cannot be skipped. There's no fast tracking. And y'all know this as a franchise from what you did with Durant and Harden and Irvin and uh, Simmons and all that bullshit. So it's like, look, you got to take the stair steps up. So be patient with Fernandez and let him fail to get the success later. If there's anything that's symptomatic of this league at this point is the fan nations are too fucking impatient. And they won't allow for good things to germinate and grow over the life course that it needs in the proper way. So that's what I'll say to you, Leaf Diggy. Respect, man. And I love seeing a fan from another nation coming in to ask us questions about it. I hope I gave you a more of a brighter picture and a broader picture of what to expect from Coach Fernandez. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Good to see you, Leaf. Uh, let's see. Ahmed saying he coached Team Canada last summer at the World Cup. That's right. Oh, shit. I forgot. I was going to go out for a walk. I'll go out later. Okay. <laughs> uh, Fiercely saying, Lex, interesting takes from that 
U Team USA roster. Many are saying Jalen Brunson was snubbed. I agree. This guy had a fantastic career year this year, and now they're going to diss him like this for these old heads. I agree with this. In fact, he was one of the most key people last summer with Anthony Edwards. And this is just, you know, in some ways, this is disrespectful, honestly. This is disrespectful towards a player like Jalen Brunson. So I'll agree with this, Fiercy, which I agree. She agrees also. Best take is assembling a super team to beat one man, and that man is Villain Dylan. Dylan Brooks is such a badass. Drop and give me 50. That's right. That's what he's saying. Put some respect on Dylan Brooks's name. Dap to Fiercy Saucer, and I'm going to give you a dunk for being awesome, Fiercy, like you always are. That is funny, funny stuff. All right, 94, 94 dunks for fiercy i love it mischief saying lex what do you think of, of free agent six foot nine ob Toppin? 40 percent three-point sniper all right mischief's got a prerequisite you got to shoot 40 percent from three to be on our bench i think Toppin's an amazing athlete i think that we saw in the last game against the pacers in the last week of the season that that guy was a key part of them separating from us in the second half with a mixture of making threes early and attacking the rim uh, with uh, dunks. He had his own personal dunk show against the Raptors in that last Pacers game of the season. So I like him a lot. Of course, he's got some plays to play in the playoffs with the Pacers right now. I don't know what's going to happen this summer. I would uh, welcome him on the Raptors, though. He's a good player. He's a good player. Yeah, Chris is saying that could happen. Vegas has USA winning it all. So my take is really bad. I don't think it's really bad. I think that you're just saying it's a slam dunk. In some ways, bro, once again, I'm a rabbit streak, but I'm also Team Canada freak. And honestly, it's like you coming in here and saying the Sixers are going to win the championship no matter what. They're unbeatable. You got to read the room better, Chris. In some ways, you what do you think my take is going to be when you come at me like that with USA shit like that? What do you think my take is going to be? Do you see what's on my shirt? Do you see what's on my shirt, my guy? Seriously, what do you think my take's going to be? Uh, it's the Vegas money stupid as well? Maybe. Yeah, just a bet betting stupid in general. Of course, there's probably idiots putting all kinds of money on stupid shit. Yeah. How is me saying Team USA will win an attempt to bother you, Lex? Make no sense, man. None. You know what it is? Maybe just like Jill, you and I's personality don't get along, bro. In some ways, you have really fucked up weird. You're a weird dude, bro. Let's just put it that way. I like you in some ways, but in some ways, you really do piss me off. Let's just put it that way. In some ways, people's personalities, they just don't fit. They just don't fit. And this happened with Jillian. In some ways, I feel it with you, bro, is what I'm saying it's like, look, in some ways, maybe you're good for the stream because you'll get me all roused up and pissed off. But in some ways also, it's like, listen, let me have my takes. I'll let you have your takes. And, you know, somebody, will you take my bet? That's all right. This is what we'll leave this with. Will you take my bet? I get the field. You get USA. Will you take my bet? If you take that, then we can not talk about this ever again until it's all settled and done. And we'll see who wins that bet. How about that? How about that? You take my bet and we'll go from there. All right, the press conference has started. Thank you, Fiercely, for the cutoff. Chris is saying, oh, come on, David. You know, all right, David took all his comments out. You know it's not. Team USA is the clear favorite. Jesus, what is this? The most lame, tame take has become the dumbest take? Makes no sense, people. None. Yeah, we are tan in the stands. What the fuck? Chris, were you there watching Team Canada with us last year? Are you uh, for Team Canada? You're about to move to Korea. I don't know. In some ways, like, I don't know, man. Listen, we're for our country. We are of nationalistic pride for our country. And you're going to go ahead and say, yeah, we're just all going to lose the USA no matter what. No, fuck that. Seriously. And that's why you're getting it right now from David and myself. That's why you're getting it. Yeah. And I love David took it all away, so I can't read it. I'm sure he got you good. <laughs> uh, Chris is saying, ha ha. Also, I like basketball. It's my favorite sport. Okay. Ahmed saying, I wonder if Lorenzo Brown will play for Spain. I don't know. In some ways, Team Spain does not not need his help, but he did play for them before in the past, I believe. I know he's a legend there in some ways. There's a good possibility it could happen. Uh, David's saying, anyway, don't fight, guys. Let's go watch Masai. All right, David, dap to you. And uh, MSJ saying, that, David, yes, true. And I dare someone to bet, actually put money against Team USA. That's the truth. Uh, first of all, I don't encourage anybody putting money on sports in any kind of way. I am anti-gambling around sports. So once again, you're button heads with me and saying stupid ass shit. So let's keep going. Uh, David's saying you can bet against one particular team. You can only bet on another team. That's the issue. If I could bet straight USA to not win, then I would. Odds are too good in that case. That's what I'm trying to make a bet with him. Just a gentlemanly, I'm saying this, you say that bet. I'll take the field. You take Team USA, Chris. And we'll see who's right by the end of the summer. How about that? Uh, Chris is saying, always fun in here. Anyway, talk to you later, everyone, and have a great day. I will aim to break my conditioning as I do and support the current thing. 
dude, do it however you want. You can only be yourself. As I said, I don't want Jill to change either. Jill can be who she is and herself and her way. You can be who you are too. In some ways, you know my format. You know what I'm all about. You're coming into my house, into my stream, and you're bringing it. it well, I'm going to do what I do. Either I mean, we're going to listen and say, hey, yeah, that's cool. Let's listen. Or I might reject that shit, just like a fucking minute bowl block shot. So it's just how it is, man. In some ways, you've got to understand. Some people are writing in their comments very much thinking about, well, how Lex will, how is Lex going to deal with this? In some ways, Tommy's not commenting as much because he understands that sometimes the comments just don't make sense. Sometimes David's writing stuff in and retracting it because he knows it will not make sense to my content. I read every single thing in there. So you have to understand what you write in there is going to come out of my mouth and I am going to straight up quick take it. And, and if I don't like it, I will go off. That's just how it is. I see a lot of y'all are watching Messiah, not me. <laughs> Nameless is saying, how can we not be impressed with Darko after seeing all, all this individual success? Are you kidding? He also reset the culture here simultaneously. I expect dividends moving forward. I agree. Grady, Scotty this year had huge leaps. Uh, Name is saying Darko is the absolute best hire possible, and he's been a saving grace in all honesty. I love that. Uh, Name is saying, would you want Nick Nurse handling the development of RJ, IQ, uh, 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 Dick, or uh, Barnes? No freaking way. We all saw what that would look like. This is totally an upgrade from Nick Nurse to Darko, and Nameless, you're going to get a dunk for that because that's just pointing out the truth. And Some people may argue that, but no. Nah, Nick Nurse was a horrible development coach, and we know this. We know this. 27 dunks for Nameless. At this point, uh, they probably hired Darko already knowing they were going to ship out veterans and replace them with young talent to be harvested. But once again, when we hired Darko last year, Bobby and Masai said Darko checked off all the things that they wanted on the list. And the really crazy shit about this year was something on that list to be able to take care of, of all kinds of adversity and crazy shit happening and sail the ship right. Consistency, setting character, setting vibes, setting positivity. In some ways, we didn't have any of that with Nick in his last year on our on our team. And Darko went through one of the darkest seasons in Raptors history, and we are shining brighter and positiver at the end of this season than any point in the whole season. That's an interesting thing right there. Yeah, Nameless is right. I like that, Tom. I'm going to give you a dunk, too. <laughs> Nameless is right. All right, Tom Duke, 41. You got Kelly Olenek, 41. All right there, Vancouver, holding it down, BC. Tom Duke's got the Kelly Olenek, 41 right now. I love it. I love it. Nameless is right, and Nameless is uh, laughing. Uh, Mo's saying, keep up this great stream, Lex. Good times, good times. Approaching Raptors for life. That's right, Mo. Y'all remember, June the 8th, Monique's birthday, NBA restaurant. Please be there or be square. That's what I'm saying. That's right. Dar Tom Duke's got uh, Darko with the espresso. Name is saying, Raptors thought, who is the best miner of raw talent available? Well, that's Darko. Like picking a stick and a shovel in stock. Yeah. Darko is a bu buy and hold asset. Do not expect to see real return dividends for another year at least. Name is saying, in five years of Darko, you could potentially have a 20, 24.7 rate of return. Most places will give you 8 to 12. Okay. He's talking big money here or something. Amit saying, no Melton was injured. Uh, no, I need to be more clear. My bad. Okay, you were talking about Melton. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not clear sometimes. People say I do that often. It's all good, especially in here in the chat. Once again, I, like what I was saying to Chris, in some ways it's about uh, uh, thinking about – these are cue cards. I'm going to read them. Uh, Masai is on right now. Okay, he was on at 11.14. It's 15 minutes ago. Bro, that hand is going to be swollen like for next year. I can personally vouch. And fiercely saying, Lex, if you join the live few seconds after it's done, you can scroll to the beginning. You won't miss a thing. All right, I'll do that, fiercely. All right, so let me get done. It's right at two hours, and I said I'd be done around 1130 today. Uh, we did talk about Grady's uh, tattoo. We talked about the Warriors getting eliminated last night. We talked about Team USA. Uh, the birthdays for today are, as I said, Dwayne Casey's birthday is today, guys. He is 67 today. And Jawan Morgan, replacement player, uh, during the Cleveland Boxing Day debacle, Jawan Morgan of Indiana. It's his birthday today. Also, he is 27, 27. So happy birthday, Jawan Morgan, replacement Raptors player. And Coach Case, our coach of the year. We love you, Dwayne Casey. And happy birthday to you, my guy. We love you so much. You are the best. All right, y'all, let me get out of here real fast. Right this second, right now. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see y'all soon. High five the fiercey. And let's go Raptors. Let's go Team Canada. Let's go Jordy. Let's get that Team Canada medal, baby. Let's go.